back from our break uh we are going to continue on with the deliberations of rpg sites game of the year awards rpg site awards i think I we know, just say really... awards yeah I don't... yeah just the words so yeah oh yeah so yeah and then oh so we're back and so joining us today once again we're going to continue on with darren mcphail hey glad to be here again Yes, we got Alex Donaldson, Aaron Van Dyne, Adam Vitelli, and Simon Shaw. Hello. Why am I back? Great. You're back because we took a little bit of a break. Now we're back. Flexed our, flexed our muscles. What? <laughs> we stretched our legs. We got up. And I think now we have a clear head to push forward with the next categories. And so uh, for the remaining part of this podcast, we'll be discussing best indie game, best small screen game, best big screen game, and then we're going to pull it all together and decide our overall game of the year award winner. In the RPG so, genre, obviously. Of course. <laughs> Let's keep it straight because we can't, yeah, so obviously the rules, once again, is that we're going to be focusing on actual RPGs this time. We're not going to be looking at visual novels or anything like that. We want to make sure we focus in on RPGs that we can hold up for the best of 2014. Perfect. Or... I don't like bears anyway. Yes. <laughs> Fuck. Oof, oof, oof. Oof, oof, oh, oof. I'm yes. still scarred. All right, so let's go right into it. I'm still yes. scarred from that Alex. fucking <laughs> endless debate about Danganronpa. Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> Mono, Monokuma. I actually want to bring it back. Before we start this, I cannot... For the life of me, go forward with having a two-person winner for the best surprise. And so <laughs> I want to. No, 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 no. Before we get into it, I just want to say I concede. We're going to choose Terra Battle as the biggest surprise. <laughs> we all know it's because Zach played Terra Battle well, real, right? I think that uh, I've, I've, I've... the other choice was kind of no. Just wasn't going to work. <laughs> That's, I, uh, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know, it, it was a fantastic surprise. It, it meant a lot, but, you know, it's purely in the terms of maybe more narrow focus. Terror Battle, as you mentioned, it's, it's, it's a big surprise because making a mobile game, an RPG that works, there weren't a lot of those this year, and so I want to give it up to Terror Battle. We'll have that be the winner. And then, what? so number two, well, I mean, the, the runner-ups will be... Of course, Valkyria Chronicles mean a lot for the Sega back mm -hmm. catalog. And then, was it Nomura? Yeah, it was, it was him uh, yeah, leaving or being removed or whatever did happen from Final Fantasy uh, 15. Insert Square, e Square yes. Enix drama here. Uh, yeah. Square Enix drama. What that could mean, because we keep hearing more and more from that group every day, it seems. Oh, what's happening? Who's leaving? Whatever it is. It's like the, Square Enix is the next Konami at this point. So we'll see <laughs> oh, how <that> Jesus. <laughs> Nasty shit. It'll be oh, yes. What is that place anymore? They're, they're, right, they're a Metal so... Gear machine who just serves one man who has a massive cult of personality. Well, I mean, well, there's, there's pretty much like Final Fantasy only lately, so. Well, there's a difference though between Konami and Square Enix, though. Konami actually releases, you know, Metal Gear Solid games. True. Very true. Mm, but very true. So, let's move on then, now that we've gotten that over with. They're all traitors to uh, Galia, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but that game came out what 2008. So yep. yeah, I just don't it. think game comes out is the biggest surprise necessarily. It was a big surprise though. Yeah. So let's so Alex do us the honors. Uh, we're going to be moving right Ooh. into the indie RPG of the year. Awards. Yeah. So um, just to reiterate, I mean, obviously we continue on from the last episode, but uh, everybody kind of put in their thoughts. Um, into a document uh, and then, then that leaves us with a list of 
games we want to consider in each category and then we're going to boil it down to a winner and two runners up so in indie we have uh transistor we have uh, divinity original sin we have um pier solar we have legend of grimrock 2 uh and boot hill heroes which is a pretty cool game i'm surprised that made the list so yeah that's cool so Sorry. well i'm gonna go before i guess that's why they're indie right oh and <laughs> we have sorry i missed one there's van helsing 2 as well oh yeah which is there uh, Someone nominated both Transistor and Van Helsing, the only one to nominate two games. So, let's see. so I'm going to go ahead and say I think uh, Transistor is on the top three of this list straight away. I definitely. Yeah. Like, Transistor, um, I mean, the art style, the music, uh, not only that, but like it has a skill system that's really, really, you know, neat and deep. And I just. It's a really, really solid game on its own, right? So, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, and I'll say I don't think it's quite as um, as good as Bastion was, but um, no, I don't. But that isn't exactly an insult, considering Bastion uh, was one of the best games that year and was very, as I recall, very, very close to winning uh, the overall gong from us that year. So, you know. It's, now, it's, hard we... co- it's tough company to keep. Right. Now, can we call Divinity Original Sin indie? Yes. Okay. It's an independent studio, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what part of it is an indie? <laughs> if a transistor is indie, then uh, Divinity is indie. Yeah, but okay, let me... Well, how big is Larian? Because the question I would say to you then is... Does that make The Witcher indie next year? Level five is an indie studio too. <laughs> I guess so. That's that's yeah. kind of Larian Studios uh, is actually I wouldn't a small really company. Say they only level put out five is. They are, they're actually like the biggest indie studio in Japan. They're actually labeled as much. That's the funny thing about that. But Larian Studios is actually yeah, it's, it's an independent studio. They only put out like one or two games every couple years, and they um they do work themselves by themselves. They're not, like, under, like, EA or Ubisoft or anything like that. So I would definitely call them indie. Mm, okay. I can get behind that. So the question is, um, <clears throat> see the others? I, and I would put Divinity on the top three, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, the, release, the amount of releases a game, uh, a, a company makes in a, t- a certain time period does not an indie company make. Just saying. That's, I understand that. It's just the fact that they are definitely... Uh, I think I think the spirit of the word uh, Larian are yeah I would say um, yes I think sometimes the, the the definition can get a bit blurred because like I say the if fact... you follow the exact definition of independent then CD Projekt is an indie studio and The Witcher Three is an indie well, game well, but let's say this Divinity Original Sin only exists because of a Kickstarter so well it's, it's, yeah then I think that is yeah. very true like it's, Witcher it's Witcher was gonna happen. Regardless. Yeah, well, they've got all their good old games. They got Namco, Bandai. So, yeah. Well, yeah, okay. they have a they have a big publisher backing. So. Yeah. So. I don't think anyone would mistake them for indie, even if they're. I guess you could call them an indie studio, but like I think the way that we, in the spirit of the award. Well, let me ask you a quick question because obviously we got Transistor. <laughs> we said that, and. Um, does anybody feel particularly strongly about Legend of Grimrock? I feel like that's a good game, um, a really solid game actually. But I'm not, I'm not entirely sold I, that it's top three material for this list. I'd argue it's better Personally, than the other ones outside of Transistor, or or just on par with it. It's better than the original in every single way. And if yes. you're into that type of RPG, it's it's incredible. Okay, it's it's definitely. I played about eight seven or eight hours of it and i definitely agree it's much better than the original and that's not to say the first was bad at all it's actually great i mean we gave it i think we gave it the award for when it came out and so it's much improved the environments are much more detailed and open and so i had a lot of fun with that especially the dungeon crawling mechanics i think they did uh, an improvement on the uh ui so Everything felt more streamlined. It just felt much better than the first one, but all, 
pretty cool, great graphics, good monster designs, uh, a lot more equipment to get, a lot more monsters, a lot more puzzles. So, I agree. See, I thought this category was going to be easy, but now I'm looking at things and struggling to see things that I'd actually cut, because, you know, I, I look at Boot Hill Heroes, and I just love the earthbound sort of look of that game. Um, I don't know if anybody else, who is it, has anybody else here played that game? No. Nope. Yeah, I have. Darren, yes. It's like a, um, it, it's 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 a lot. It's got a lot in common with Earthbound. I'd be very surprised yeah. if they weren't heavily heavily inspired by that game. They definitely and the thing were. I really like is. I think it was originally like pitched like that because I think like a couple years ago when they first announced it, that was kind of how they were marketing it until they kind of dialed it back a bit. Yeah, and it, it's um, it, it's got this lovely Wild West sort of theme to it, but at the same time. Um, I can. It's 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 not breaking any any ground in any particularly crazy way. Against um, some of the others in this category, I don't necessarily think it would win. But it definitely deserves to be. If you think that and I think that, and we've both played it, then we can at least say we can cut that. Yeah. Reluctantly, because it is it is really fun. So mm -hmm. then. The other games on the list uh, that remain, uh, there's one that jumps out to me because I know it quite well, with Van Helsing 2. I think that's a really um, cool game. I really like the tone of it. I really like the art. Um, but in the same year, even if it is indie, and it is, in the same year that um, the Diablo expansion came out, it's kind of hard to look at that game and say it's top draw stuff. But I know, did, did you ever get round to playing it, Zach, or did you only finish the first one? Um, I only finished, I did not actually get around to playing Van Helsing 2. I did beat the first one, and it caught me off guard of how good a game it was. It would be like a Dishonor calling it some sort of Diablo clone. Um, it's got some great music and got a cool style to it. I did not play 2. Uh, obviously, it seems like it's a better version of that, kind of like how Grimrock was, but... Uh, so that's why I can't have to kind of abstain to that game since I don't know much about it after just, you know, reading a few articles. I'll say game... that... Sorry, go ahead. Is this game supposed to look Dia better than Diablo, Diablo 3? Uh, I... Better than Diablo, Diablo 3? I mean, that's kind of the fact that Van Helsing's an indie game and Diablo 3 is a big bite. Yeah. No, no, um... I'm saying Van Helsing 2 looks better than Diablo 3. Oh. It's, a, it's a pretty cool game, and um, I really like the tone and stuff because it is quite... It's quite different, but the thing I'll say about um, it is that it's part of they've, been, they've always been quite open from the very first game that they envisioned it as a trilogy, and they're shorter games, and it, and they're cheaper games, and I think almost the way it is 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 that if really they were making a big budget game, these three games would just be one game, um, and I don't think it really does enough differently from the second from the first one. So I think, while it deserves to be acknowledged, I don't think it belongs in our top three. And I say that as I think the only person here has actually played it. But if you haven't played it, Simon, I highly recommend you do. Cause it I is love really cool. Diablo 3 so much now. You I should. You, you, would like, you would like, you would like oh, Van Helsing. The, first, the vanilla Diablo 3 was so garbage. Wow. You should check out Van Helsing. <laughs> I reviewed I know, that one. I gave you shit for it. I'll still give you shit for it's... it. Well, I, I never really played it since then, so that's probably why. Reaper of Souls was great. God damn that. It's so okay, so if that's cut, that actually brings this category down quite tight, which leaves us with Pierce Solar, Pure. Divinity, or Pure Solar. Or Solar whatever. Let's not get into that. <laughs> no, it's oh. Pure Solar. It's <laughs> give a lot of crap yeah. for that. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Grimrock, Pierce Solar, and I see. I just fucking said it the wrong way. Jesus. And uh, I'm not the only one. one. Legend of Grimrock, no, Pierce Solar, he and done. Divinity Original Sin. So one of those has to go. As the person who revere, reviewed uh, Pierce Solar, I'll say it's probably the safest one to cut. Um, I really, really, really want to play that game. I just have not gotten to it yet. I did. I have like it on my list to play very soon, but. It, it obviously it sounds like it, it aims for a very specific yeah. audience. It's, it aims for that work design it, type it of RPG, like the Lunar games, yeah. and it does it very well. It's a good game, but there's just I think these other games in the category here are just the better games. 
Well, to be fair, isn't it not to discredit it in any way? It's more like an HD remaster of the yeah. game that came out. Of a game ago. that technically came out a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, so. that is true as well. Yeah, not not to because obviously this is our first time really you know looking yeah. at it. So it's like we have to. Well, give the it only way to play it before and... was to own the cartridge version of it. This is the first digital. The Sega Genesis. Yeah. Sega Genesis or version, Sega yeah. CD. Yeah. Well, they used the Sega CD music, yeah. so they did release it for that, right? Yeah, the sound. For it. But if you guys uh, have agreed on that, and I'm not going to argue because I haven't actually had time to play it, it's on, on my list of things to do, that actually brings us to free because it sounds like you guys also feel quite strongly between you, Darren Zach, about uh, Grimrock and Divinity bo- it, both. Between They're you. both really good. They're both really good. I would put Divinity above Grimrock as much as I lo- love playing Grimrock 2. I, like I said, I've only played about eight hours of it. I don't know how far that is into the game. I would imagine it's not that far from the end of it, because Grimrock 1 was probably about that long, if not like 12 hours or something like that, but I didn't like, do everything. Uh, how far did you get? I only got around 10 hours. I wasn't much further than you. But Divinity, I put oh. a fair amount of time into. I put about 30 hours in that yeah. game. I put more time um, recently to it as well. And, and I will say right now that I'll agree with you on Divinity being the better game, especially if you consider the whole game can be played in co-op, and it works really well with co-op. It amazingly well, and the way the co-op works in that game is pretty fantastic because you can create strategies with the turn-based tactics in that game to really pull something off pretty gr- crazy. Like, um, I know there's there's all these different ways you can cast spells to work together to damage the enemy, like... Um, say your partner casts some sort of rain spell and it makes the monster wet, then the other person can cast a, a lightning spell and do like much bigger damage. Things like that work a lot, even if like casting it on the environment itself. There's a lot going on, especially in the co-op, and the whole game can be experienced that way, not just like where some games where you only get like a very specific function feature of it or a cut down story. It's like the whole thing can be experienced in co-op. And that's probably its best feature, amongst other mm-hmm. things. I think the soundtrack is... It's it's probably one of the bit, the better uh, uh, the Kickstarter games and the Greenlight games. Oh, absolutely. I, I would definitely agree. I mean, that and like Shadowrun are probably tops yeah. for me as far as Kickstarter games. FTL. FTL. F- FTL. I'm, I'm not, I've only played like a little oh, bit of FTL, fuck. so you know more than me. I can me. talk about that game for hours, <laughs> but that's not relevant. So, because yeah, well, that, 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 so that gives us our top three. So the question here then, we have Grimrock, Divinity, and Transistor. And it sounds like you guys have quite a lot good to say about Divinity versus Grimrock. So where does that stand versus Transistor? Because in my mind, Transistor is the clear winner of this category. But I also did start this whole discussion by saying that I didn't think it was as good as Bastion. That's it. Okay. From, and this is coming from someone who hasn't... I mean, Darren, have you played both games? Because I have only played Divinity. I have not played Trinity. Yeah, I have played. I've played all of them in this category. How would you compare the two? Uh, I would say it largely comes down to taste. As someone who really enjoys the classical computer-type style RPGs, I'd say Divinity wins for kind of reviving the genre and doing it so brilliantly and arguably better than the games that came before it. Whereas Transistor mm-hmm. is kind of the almost as good uh, pre- uh, game coming after its predecessor, Bastion. And it's still a really fantastic game, but I'd argue that Divinity does a lot more, and it does a lot more new, innovative concepts that have existed in previous computer RPGs. And so I'd say it's the winner. Uh, so I, I reviewed Transistor, and I, I not played Divinity, but I've watched a fair amount of it being played. Now, when I reviewed Transistor, I believe numbers-wise, I gave it 8 out of 10. And yep. my my idea was that I, or my thoughts were basically that it's really anchored down by the skill system, which is really, really neat. And that's really most of my praise for it, in addition to the art style and the music and just the presentation in general. Um, just a quick, you know, summary of the skill system. You get all these various skills that you can use. And you combine them in various ways. You can put, you can have one skill basically power up a second skill. Like you can have skill A power up skill B, or you can reverse that, have skill B power up skill A. And you can use them in various ways in lots of combinations. And that's, it's really, really cool. But I think the criticisms I pointed out was that it's very linear. It's basically along a straight line. And 
it's kind of a narrow game in that regard. You're basically just going from like a battle arena to a, a battle arena, and that's that's pretty much the structure of the game. And it's it's the, I do think that's a little a little bit shallow, um, but otherwise I do think it's really really great. <laughs> so. <laughs> I would, by and large, agree with everything that Ben Adam just said about about Transistor. It's um, it's a lovely game, but all the things you just described about it being slightly shallow and the skill system being the best of it, but other things around it perhaps not being as strong as that. Everything, yeah, I, but, e everything that I feel. Yeah, and, I mean the presentation is great. It's a very, very, very pretty game, and the music is fantastic. Oh, um, just right, and so. Um, Divinity, again, I haven't played it, but it does seem to be a much more, like, expansive game, you know. Yes. Uh, I would not, I would not say it's I mean, that big a game, it's, but it's, it's got ambition in its not so big budget. Presentation. Right, I mean, it's just that the level of focus is a little different between the two games, so. Yeah, the different designs, different, different types of RPGs. Types of genres. Yeah, it's but I think that for Transistor, and this is only going off of what I've heard. What I've heard is that the writing's not that big in Trans. I mean, it's not that well told in Transistor. Like while in Bastion, it was more about narrating what was happening. It's that the person talking to you. This is what I've only heard that it sometimes can get on your nerves when the guy keeps talking to you all the time and stuff like that. Um, but Divinity, it's that you. So you have these two people, um, your, your two co-op, uh, not two a couple, uh, the two people that are in the main story, and a lot of the interaction you have with each other and other people all comes down to these two characters, and you decide what the reactions are going to be. Um, like you talk to one this one person, this one NPC, and both of your two people get their say on how to advance this conversation or you talk to each other about how you want to move forward with a certain adventure, part of the adventure, and there's all these quests and things you can do, but it all comes back to the writing itself, and I think the writing in Divinity is very, very, very good. Transistors... Because um, it tells a brilliant Transistors story. writing is definitely, like, in the background. It's not front and center in terms yeah. of dialogue. Uh, it's, it's subdued is maybe the best word to use. Um, so, no, there isn't a narrator talking to you every five seconds like Bastion. Um, but it's you I mean the story is actually largely told by these terminals you come to um, these the terminals really the only point they have in the game is to kind of you know build the world and the whole and the story behind it uh, so you you're literally just walking around you do maybe that battling some enemies you come across a terminal you click it uh, you read it and that's there's a couple of dialogue exchanges but it's very in the background mm -hmm. they, they do some really lovely stuff with just uh, use of song and singing as well in that game that's that's really uh, something special that has to be noted when it comes to kind of bleeds over into the soundtrack category where Transistor was one of the runners up but um, the use of, of song and singing in that game narrative in a narrative sense is is oh yes there are, there are it, a couple of brilliant there's a couple of great uh, scenes in the game that they're not like cut scenes, but they'll have, you know, the artwork, which again is great, um, you know, kind of like a comic book type style sometimes um, with, you know, some great music in the background. Um, and the main character is a singer, which it, so it does tie into mm -hmm, yeah. the narrative that is there. <laughs> so it's... I think, I think, in, uh, and this is... I guess I can only speak of Divinity's sake is that um, the focus on choice is very big in Divinity Original Sin as well. Like, you can approach everything uh, independently of each other. So, you could walk into town uh, and decide, I want to, like, say, you, 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 let's say instead of town, like, you go out and you find, like, say, a, a troll or an orc that is like standing over his comrades that have all been killed. And now you can go up and you just kill that orc, take whatever he has and walk away. Um, you could talk to him, uh, help him take out whoever it is that killed his entire tribe. You can just uh, leave him alone and walk away. 
Uh, and that's the kind of the, the same decisions you make when you go into town. Like, I was playing one time, I accidentally misclicked and killed, like, a random citizen, and all of a sudden, I had the entire town on me, and I was just basically, I, I think I wiped out an entire town by myself just because I accidentally misclicked on a single villager <laughs> when I was walking in. And that's the, it's like Skyrim in a sense that that kind of thing can happen. And it's your choice whether to, you know, save and reload or just kind of go with it. And that totally happens in that game. And it's, it's, it's the same as if um, every single NPC in that game can also fight with you pretty much. Like, I think at one point I had an animal in my group who fought with me, like a dog that I happened to come across into town that was in part of this quest. All of a sudden I see, like, like it had a life bar and it had a level, and it just started fighting with me. I was like, wait, what the hell is going on? It's it's this kind of, like, weird uh, organic world where it can be uh, choice yeah. matters. Yeah. It, 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 all these things can happen, and the everything feels like very fleshed out. Like every uh, path that you take, there's a lot in there. It doesn't feel like every, anything's cheapened out. Uh, they don't. Nothing doesn't feel like unfinished. Uh, I mean, when they actually you know released the game properly this past summer, nothing felt like unfinished. It felt like they really put a lot of work into making sure that whatever decision you decide to make. You know, they'll, they'll back you up and give you some sort of motivation to continue down that road if you want to do something sinister, like become the most evil person in the entire game and wipe out entire villages if you so So, uh, obviously I haven't played the game, so I kind of have to just go by what I've experienced otherwise and what I've heard. But it, we I talked briefly, like, the level of focus in these two games is definitely not the same, but I said Divinity seems more expansive, but it also seems... You know, not just the, the the width, but also the depth. It's a very deep game. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so it's it's not it's not really sacrificing you know focus for you know content or anything like that. It doesn't seem like it. Um, well, but, the, the problem is, yeah. yeah no, I mean, uh, this is the, the kind of a this doesn't really follow. But the uh, one other thing about Transistor that I just wanted to mention um, that I wasn't so hot on the in the combat system uh, with Transistor. There are kind of two different styles. There's the, like the uh, there's the action RPG in real time fighting where you just use the skills like any action RPG, and then there's you know a, a turn based setting where you kind of create you know a sequence I think is the word they use of abilities, and you you have as much time in the world to set them up, and then you just kind of watch it play out. And I felt that the balance there wasn't great. There, if you were fighting in real time all the time. You, you you're at a disadvantage like the, your main character moves pretty slow so you, i found myself always doing this turn-based mode so I, I feel like that was a thing that i didn't like about transistor so even though i haven't played divinity i am not against having it win this category even though i'm i like transistor in many ways it just has a couple of these issues that i can't ignore so bottom line do we decide Divinity or Transistor? It sounds like we're leaning towards Divinity with this one. I think the yeah. things that you have said have, have, have done great things to uh, convince me. And I think if we're talking about indie games and indie games accomplishing great things, I think you being able to... Uh, you said the sentence, uh, it's sort of like Skyrim, which I think is a really... <laughs> it's more, it's, an, impressive, it's, more it's an impressive thing for to attribute to an indie game and then when you talk about things like you know the, the the emergent stuff with ai and the animals that would fight for you and stuff like that and the thing is that that sits directly against as adam just said some of the issues that i have with transistor with the the way the combat plays out um and that kind of thing so i would also i, I really really love transistor and i think it's a wonderful game um but I would, not, I would not be against it not winning this category yeah, I think uh, actually, like I I remember being surprised um, when Divinity came out, and I saw these people online talking about how good it was and impressed they were, and I was like, really? I mean, the last two games, you know, were okay. I reviewed Divinity two, and that game was yeah. The last well, okay, so the last two games it. had problems or whatever. Echo Drek. And then all of a sudden, this new one is actually good. I was like. Nah, there's no way. That's... But I mean, I mean, it's, guys, uh, it uh... seems like it's it seems to be very very highly praised. Um, 
there, like I to be, I'm going to be quite honest and say I like I don't really even know what the criticisms are of the game because everyone just talks about all the things they like about it, you know. Right, right. I mean, I, I even saw people who are like super picky about games say that they really liked it, and I was like, huh, well. I, I think the only problems were when that game was still as early access and people were having an issue with the parts that are still being worked on, and so when it actually did come out. That's probably where you got, obviously, a lot well, of... Well, even after its official release, didn't it have, like, a couple of significant updates even after that to, like, tweak things? There was glitches and stuff like that, like bugs and whatnot, but it it kind of ironed itself out after a while. They, they keep putting out patches, and there's a gigantic modding community with that thing because they released a full editor, so you can go on Steam Workshop and check out a lot of things people have done. They've already made new, like... Towns, new people, new villagers, new pretty much all like objects, a lot of stuff that um, people can make their own story pretty much that they want to make. So that's they've kind of gotten around some of the more core issues of that game. There's nothing actually, I should say, there's no real core problems with it. It's there's just the the peripheral that have been causing, causing some issues, but I think you don't really hear too much about that anymore. At least I think. I think, let's be real, this is winning this category, right? Yeah, let's choose it. So yeah. let's move on. <laughs> Should probably Yay. move on. Yeah, let's move on. We pretty much figured that out. So we got that. So what's, and you should so what's probably, the next category? You should probably change. You should probably change big surprise to tear about about it. Uh, yes, on, okay. On the, on the document, um, on the document. Okay. yeah. Uh, yes, of course. So that's Grimrock, uh, Divinity Original Sin, and, uh, Di and Transistor, and Divinity wins that category, right? All right. Yeah, so next up. Best small screen RPG. Yeah, so the logic here is we're, you know, we've done a category for um, for, for, for independent uh, for, for independent games and all that kind of stuff, and we're going to now break into into small and big screen stuff. Um, and obviously small screen can be anything from a, a 3DS and a Vita, of course, but that can also be uh, handheld stuff. So in this category, we have uh, Bravely Default, Persona Q, uh, Fantasy Life, uh, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, uh, Joe Denver's Lone Wolf, uh, Tales of Hearts are The Shadow Sun, uh, Terror Battle. Somebody's put Final Fantasy VI on there. Well, we'll come back to that. Final Fantasy VI, uh, <laughs> Deus Ex the Fall, well, Final the phone, Fantasy, eh? Curtain Call. It did, yeah. But I, I, I've got comments to make about that. <laughs> from Final Fantasy, Kong, <laughs> uh, Pierce Solar, uh, uh, and that's the list. So I'm going to kick off and say that that Final Fantasy VI mobile. Why port, is that even on there? It doesn't belong on this Who fucking list. It is atrocious. The, the way it's not. Who put that on there? I don't know. Six, six. You know, originally as it is, you know, before the mobile version is fine, but that mobile version, no. At least Final Fantasy VI is an RPG. Why is the algorithm on there? The well, algorithm is we, 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 technically we, we, we an RPG by, by like the genre that it's listed as. So, I mean, that was under even though it has like the rhythm stuff, there is like RPG stuff in there as well. So. Sure, but that's more. I think it is more tangential. I, I, I think it it's get dis, it gets disqualified. Just I mean, because I don't disagree with taking tangential. it out. Along six. Well, I think I think six and theater of them can both go immediately yeah. because the right. art yeah. on six should just exclude it. And we cut out theater. I think no one knows why that's who, on who there. Even voted and we for six. <laughs> we cut out theater rhythm earlier because we thought it was uh, out of tangential because you know it wasn't in our top three. What, what, what was our argument? Well, yeah, that I mean, it's, no, no, it's we cut it out because because expansion pack. It didn't change much from the original theater. Right, rhythm. that's, that's what, what I mean. mean. Right, it didn't. It's still good, but it didn't really. They just announced some Xenogears uh, DLC, and so I'd put that at the top of my list. Oh, but well, that just, that's just <laughs> extra songs. I mean, that's that's just whatever. So. That. And yeah. uh, you know, not to just spend this uh, to, to kick off by ragging on Square Enix, <laughs> but um, I really like uh, Dare Sex the Fall. Was that even this year? Oh, the last Fall game came out last year because I already covered it. I think that was actually I last think, year. Didn't we? Didn't it win? Right. Or did we like, vote? Wikipedia, the shit, oh. guys. Woo! No, I think, yeah, uh, 
Maybe, maybe maybe it came out on something else, or maybe somebody's thinking of the PC route. All right, guys. Because I think it came Here to it Android this year. Yeah, iOS, iOS was last July 11th, 2013. Yes. Yeah, so oh, gone. I yeah. do think they ported it because it was like PC, instantly. But yeah. even then, it's still an old port, so it doesn't. Well, it, I, I think it's somebody. This year. Yeah, Android. Android came out this year, but I think I think we even talked about it last year because I reviewed it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember we talked about it. So that can go. Yeah, was... um, I really like. Uh, Joe Denver's Lone Wolf and the Shadow Sun, but if we're really just taking a machete to this really long list, um, <laughs> why a machete, uh, bro? Why a machete? I, I don't, I don't, I like, I don't think they are going to stick in this category. I haven't even, I don't even, I've heard of that game. I've been meaning to play it. I just never got into it because I've heard good things. But yeah, let's go. I- I I want to contest. Do, does does Pokemon really belong on this list? To be yeah. honest, well, it's someone a... voted for it. Or... Yeah, or I mean, the Persona Q. In fact, in fact, oh man, shots <laughs> fired. <laughs> I mean, they're not bad games, you right? And they're no, no. I'm not saying it's a bad game. That's not what I'm saying. We should. Are you saying there's, there's too much water? Oh, I should make a note that Liz. Uh, Liz is not here with us. Uh, she left during the break, and David's not with us either. David Kreinberg. So I just want to point that out because well, they, I'm sure we didn't mention this before. But Liz actually reviewed Pokemon, uh, so she isn't here to back up her review. But from what she said, and she didn't give it that high remarks. It felt like it was kind of it was of pretty much the same game. The... It's it's a remake. She didn't feel like oh, it was anything it? better or lesser oh. than the other past games. Yeah, they, she felt like it's kind and, of more and, of what we And in to normal expect. Game Freak fashion, some I mean, of the additions they took, they added to the other, to what was the other most recent release, X and Y? Oh, X and Y. Well, X and y. well they, you know, they, they you know, uh, new mechanics come into the game, and then they take them out. <laughs> like, like. That's it. They. That's the, the problem with Oris <laughs> is that they said, yeah, they, they put new, new mechanics in X and Y, because, but because this is... Uh, they did include some some of those like things the in yeah. with this version of of those ver- of, the, of this version of the game like um, on there, but I don't I I think she pretty much felt like indifferent towards it completely. Well, it's interesting. Um, well, I don't think any of us are going to bat for it heavily. Yeah, so. does anybody here actually played the I have, game games? Or and it doesn't them? deserve to be on oh, there. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's uh, <laughs> well, I guess I'm outnumbered, so I won't bother with it. Well, I no, because because I I like those. We'll Please wait. Right. I'm not. I'm not ready to cut it yet because there's other things on this list. Okay. Fair enough. No. No. Fair enough. Okay. Fair I would enough. cut. I voted for it. I would cut Terra Battle. Because I, I honestly, would, I, 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 the only time I, I, I spend I, with it anymore. I already. Is just, I you know. self censored that from the from the indie list because I knew it wouldn't. I knew it wouldn't. Wouldn't 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 live in that list. Wouldn't fly. Um, I, would, I would cut Pokemon before Terra Battle. I. I both. would cut Pokemon before Tales of Heart, but I would cut Tales of Hearts before both of those motherfuckers. I I uh, agree. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Tales I of Hearts. Was, I thought Tales of Hearts is super by the numbers and average and not interesting really in any any respect. I agree completely, wholehearted. I probably I think, hate the game more than I. I probably hate the game more than Adam does. So yeah, I I, I think it's like if you're dying to play a kind of classic style RPG on Vita, it's fine. But that's that's it. It's you, you it want to play, really you want to play an action game. You play Memories of Self Seta. That's what you play. What what was the other Tales game that people actually really wanted to come Innocence out? Here, Innocence is apparently pretty good. It's better than, apparently it's better than the DS one. <laughs> Vesperia. Well, I, okay, I, Vesperia I, I think Jack was talking. I, I would buy eight copies of Vesperia for Vita. Just saying. Oh man, at this point <laughs> they should just put it on PS4 and then. Let the salt flow. What's hysteria at this Listen, point? It's all <laughs> hysteria <laughs> sales Jesus. weren't as good as Exilia, to be honest. They'll probably be like, no, we're not going to do it because it wouldn't sell that much. Do a remaster. Oh, man, like they before. could. I mean, look at all. I mean, we're getting Final Fantasy X, 10, 10 to HD, a, a freaking port of a port. Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, she's getting up in arms. She, she, she loves Yuri, apparently. So. But aren't they going to charge you like Let's another... I l- it was fifty dollars. Awesome. Have fun. Yeah, plenty of fun. To be <laughs> anyway, let's, let's yeah. Get, let's Tales of Hearts are just so. Tales of Hearts. What games ahead. do we have left in this category? Okay. Left in this category: Bravely Default, Persona Q, uh, Fantasy Life, uh, Terra Battle, Pokemon Omega Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire. 
uh, Pure Solar. That's I the think. List. I think. Pure Solar. How does Q, Pure Solar look I think on Persona the Persona Q and uh, Bravely Default definitely deserves to stay. Like. I agree. <laughs> well, uh, I want to take a yeah, second I before think... anybody mentions it to, to just. I don't know if anybody else here has played Fantasy Life, and I wasn't the one who wrote it, but um, oh. when it was written, I was quite taken aback because I actually reviewed that game and as soon as I read it I was like oh yeah that game is pretty fun uh, <laughs> you reviewed it and you forgot well I suppose <laughs> that <laughs> but no it, it's just like it's one of those things though you know you, kind of like you, a one and done or... you review so much it's kind of like um, Animal Crossing slash Harvest Moon I knew you were gonna say it. I knew you were gonna say it. With, 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 with RPG elements so the whole thing is you know you're you're in a town you're doing stuff but then rather than just mindless Animal Crossing, I'm going to fish, which is just you pressing A to throw the rod into the fucking water, and then you wait for a splash, and then you press A again. You've actually got RPG combat, and you're doing things like... Everything kind of feeds into each other, so if you uh, make good tools, then you be good. Then you can be a better hunter, and you can use the pelts from the animals you hunt to make better armor, to go into dungeons, and so on and so forth. Um... And it's it's really really fun and but just imagine it's... Rune Factory with just more customization and like inter interactive interactability cool. with I'd other players like that's what but, fantasy it really is. It's really fun and I think I think uh, they did a um, they did an absolutely brilliant job. Uh, but uh, does it? Let's be real on... here. We all know what game here is going to be the number one or at least in the top three and that's going to be bravely default well, i'll say i was going to bring that mm. up is that it sounds like the biggest point about fantasy life is the job system and that's in bravely default they have a job system no, uh, i guess this is the no no system. no like, it's, it's, it really way to put it though. itself like there's a lot of components and features like it's a for for a handheld game it is absolutely massive the amount of features yeah it's it, it's Cust it's this customization you can do on it like it's like it, it, it really it, it really is mixing in elements of Harvest Moon in Animal Crossing. That's the because best it, way to do it. Yeah, because the title give the title gives it away. It isn't about um, it isn't about about the job system. It's about the way the job system feeds into this quote unquote fantasy life that you that you begin to lead. Yeah. One, one uh, choice that you make impacts a lot of the other ele gameplay elements that exist in the game. It's it's not it's not inclusive. It's, it's uh, ex exclusive, sorry. But on the flip side, the combat's kind of simple because you can see that they wanted to not make it too difficult for Animal Crossing people. And so in, in that alone, I can see that not making I feel like this game would have been a perfect iOS like game like it would have been a freaking awesome but well like, they did i mean the game is for a younger audience so i mean they can't make it i mean i would have, i wouldn't be surprised if it came to ios you know it's a nintendo published it so i doubt it yeah That's nintendo true. published oh the first in the long line of nintendo games coming to ios at a time near okay year. i've just cut fantasy life it, it, it hurts me a little no, bit no i'm so sorry. yeah right but i, I can't that. fantasy, <laughs> fantasy life <laughs> before pokemon really <laughs> i'd cut it before hurts. persona Shit, so, dude, I shots that... fucking fired. Oof. So we got we got that cut. I still think we should cut Terra. I I think I think Pierce Ola should go because before that because I, I, you know what? Here? Because oh, for the same ball. reason for the same reasons we discussed in indie, it is sort of a game that's been around the block a few times. Well, I mean, come on. If it's not going to win in indie, if it's if you can't even get into runner runner up in indie, it's not going to. I don't think we, with this so I, I would not like discount it at all just because it didn't. Make I was going to say because we've but, got the the other the, the other two that are in indie are also in big screen, so you know. Yes, because it looks good on a big screen, even they. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. But yeah. Uh, okay. I so now the list is Persona yeah, Q, gonna... Bravely Default, Pokemon, Terra Battle. Cut Pokemon. Cut Pokemon. I'd say, I'm I'm with Cut Terra Battle. I cut Terra Battle because there are better RPGs yeah, on mobile. Yeah, I I would say that and Pokemon actually. Yeah. It's got yeah. Persona. Well, hang um, on. Like Pokemon, it came out beforehand. Like it's not something new. Okay, well, hang on. If, if we're saying that Bravely Default and Persona Q are going through. 
That means yeah. we're picking one out of Persona, right. out of out of Terra Battle or Pokemon. Right. To I come into Pokemon the... ahead of Terra Battle. I... I am with that. I stand with that. Because there's there's been better mobile RPGs this year, like Shadowrun, Banner Saga, Coach uh, came out. Even if that's I not don't a think Banner Saga is mm, very good, but it's better than Terra Battle. No, no, you that's just not. Out. <laughs> well, you can live in your world of wrong. There was there was some really good mobile RPGs this year. I I just especially Shadowrun. Well, uh, well, why really would you? you know, let me put it like this: Why would you? Why would you choose Pokemon over Terra Battle? Because it's a better game. I would imagine they did a much more job. They they enhanced it and remade it. I mean, they put new see my argument. Uh, they, I'm, I I couldn't care how. less about Pokemon honestly, it's but I, I have that's not my, played that that's game my since biggest Blue. But flaw with it is that it's a remade game. Have you played? Yes, it? I've played it. Oh, I'm asking. I'm not saying here's, like. Here's what, here's what I'd say. Figures. I mean, what, what did Liz did Liz, Liz give? Uh, Pokemon a seven or an eight. I know the numbers aren't. I think really she gave it a seven. Seven. But yeah, it's the kind of all I'm saying. But all I, yeah, but all I'm saying is just on a, on a raw level, we all follow the same scoring set, scale on this site. If I was to sit down tomorrow and write out a Terra Battle review, I would give Terra Battle an eight. Yeah, yeah. And I, I would think give, I, I would think give you're Pokemon all over, six or over rating Terra. I would I would put Pokemon over Terra Battle because Terra Battle for me, all I use it for lately has just been. Waiting till I get enough energy to recruit a new character, and then that's it goes back into the app drawer at this point because I think the I thing just, for me is after it's, a while it's, it's trying it. something new where Pokemon is the same old. It's, I, I, it, and it's literally the same. That's true. To be really fair, it is it's really the literally same the same. I've heard with Terra Battle, now I've not gotten this far. It's that the whole stamina thing becomes a little more egregious. Like it becomes more upfront and more obtuse, so it becomes more obstructive with well, the experience. Well, I think I think it, it depends before. how much time you've got. Like, if you've got nothing fucking better to do, then then then, then play that game in in huge sessions. Then yeah, for me, you know, it, it's not something. You know, if I'm going to play a game in a huge session, I sit down with something more meaty. For me, yeah, just I mean, doing a, a, a quick. Like okay, when you get when you get to the end game, you, you're in the region of like nearly a hundred, uh, nearly a hundred stamina, and uh, the average story mission takes. You have a hundred stamina. I need to see how much I stamina. Well, because it goes up. It goes up. To be fair, every, that's every mobile game though. Every mobile game, as you play no, more, I, it takes more time to for things to. No, 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 no. I'm saying the opposite with Terra Battle. You know, it, I don't think it really ramps. It gives you more stamina, but apart from. The average story mission, for instance, at the end, during, towards the end game is what somewhere around the, the fifteen stamina mark, and you've got nearly a hundred. And then they do have things like if you're going to go and do something big, uh, like battle Odin to try and recruit Odin, um, that might cost you forty. But that's the whole point of those fights is that they yeah it gives you choices. I mean, there's bigger it's, rewards too. There's bigger like, rewards. So yeah. you can suck at it, and you know, fuck, I lost all my stamina. But you can play yeah, the same route. Yeah. It's gonna take longer. But at the same time, is that if we're calling it like the best small screen RPG experience, it's that would you say Pokemon? I'm not saying it's going to win this category. I'm just saying I think it's better than Pokemon. That's, I was uh, yeah, I was I revisiting Liz's more... review, and uh, she based she mentions that Pokemon, you know, being a a, a, a it's just a, a remaster, a remake, or whatever, that it doesn't it does doesn't hide some of the problems, you know, that the older games had. In terms of them being ten years old now, like uh, she mentions the pacing and the the routes being long and things like that. So, so just to make sure, as like Simon, you played the Pokemon. Yeah, I played it. I haven't finished like I haven't finished everything, but I have played it. Yes. Have you have you played Terra? Yeah, I played Terra. How do you? How would you compare the two? I told you like I think if I were to review it, and I hate doing numbers, but if you. You said eight, yeah, but what does that mean? Just, uh, just Terra Battle know, is you know. a much more new, complete, unique experience, uh, and offers something different that's on the mobile. I don't think it's as revolutionary as you know. I don't want to, I don't want to tread back to what we discussed in the other session, but like, yeah, you want to put on a pedestal. Yeah, I don't want to put on a pedestal, <laughs> but it is better than Pokemon. Pokemon, it stays tried and true to what it does well, and not only that, but it really relies on its original Ruby and Sapphire release roots. Like, it really is, like, 
if there's remasters, there's a this is a glorified remaster, and I it's really hard for me to take it take it any other way. Like I can't I can't take this seriously when Terra Battle is something else, or something new. For me, for, oh, well, for, for oh, me, well, I've I've played them both, but it was you know, Pokemon is is. Um, it's not with Terra Battle, actually. It's e- it, I think it's easy to say, uh, well, you know, a lot of mobile games have done the stamina stuff and the energy stuff well, but I think it's the first Japanese game and the first RPG to do that kind of stuff well, which both of which I think is significant. I think it's an interesting combination of kind of the standard um, puzzle game sort of mechanics that suit mobile with the tropes of RPGs where you are, you know, in the late game, you're thinking about skills um, in a very RPG way. You're thinking about, you know, in a sort of uh, Final Fantasy job system way. Okay, this character has three jobs. What skill am I going to bring from the first job into the third job? And that kind of thing, which is is, is different from mobile. And th- the main thing I can say is, you know, I, I went and bought Pokemon and played probably about seven or eight hours and then got bored because it is the same as everything I've experienced before. Um, I do. I, I don't want to like discount it because I've seen people play it, and it they did a great job with the look of that game. Like just walking around in that more the three D world and looking at how the effects of the world. The art in that game is really well done. Um, I would. I do. But if you take off, I like do. The first I do. Game, I do think that. Like, I do think that Terra Battle, you know, I, 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 it's kind of between Terra Battle and Pokemon, and having not been into Pokemon since I was in my elementary school days, yeah, I would probably put Terra Battle. Uh, Terra Battle is, is a very good game. I, I just hear, this is how I would put I, it. Terra Battle not. is a 2013 Mercedes E350, whatever model is. Um, what are we doing with analogies? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying it's a new Pokemon. car. It's, it's a new car. It's a very new car. Whereas Pokemon is it's it's like an oh, oh, uh, a 1999 Lexus with a with a fresh coat of paint like that's all it is. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna get shot for this. Analogies. I'm gonna get so much shit for this, but like that's that's really what it is. Like there's some that, that there there Huh? I, I, the analogy is sensible, <laughs> not outrageous. I understand. <laughs> I, so basically, okay. Let's let's just let's just decide it now. Let's be, like let's, I mean, let's be fair. We're talking about third place here, right? That's that's kind of what it's I was going to move on. Is that you know, it sounds like Terra Battle is going to be number three. So let's let's put it there. I don't think anyone's really right. propping up Pokemon anyway. Anyway, so who's the, what's the what's the point? It's Liz, if she was here, I'm sure she would basically agree with what you guys are saying. Anyway. Right, based on her view. So, so yeah, based on her own review, should be like I said, <clears> different. <throat> towards Pokemon, the new one. I mean, maybe the next Pokemon will do something radical. Who knows? Uh, but I, I personally, I think they did a great job, even if I'm not a fan, really, of that series. So, um, Talk about that Tekken spin We'll move off. on. Oh, so, Damn it. That's, 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 that's Pokken or whatever Pokin. it's called? Pokin. It is Pokken. Pokken? Pokken? Tekken oh, sucks, God. anyway. Tekken yeah. does suck. <laughs> I agree. Not stop Thank juggling. You, Alex. juggling all for days. <laughs> well, I'm a Street Fighter player, so fuck Tekken. You'll, miss, you'll, you'll probably recoup Chloe when she comes yeah. over here. All right, so, got that. Let me come to the real meat of the argument. <laughs> of course, let's talk about Chloe and her... No. Her no. Uh, Don't so... know, Zach, that you're going to main that character. I did main Platinum and Blast Blue, so... Anyway, so see, I knew you played so... Blaze Blue, so... Yeah. So, we got that, number three, and now it's between Persona Q and Bravely Default. I'd say Bravely Default seems I'd like say Bravely better. Default by, like... Persona Q's but it's very close. Like, there are so many things Persona Q does well. But there's also there's also I've a few things with... that Persona Q and Bravely Default don't do well. Yeah, well, I mean... I heard yeah. the second half of Bravely Default kind of... Okay, so Bravely Default does great. a lot of things wrong compared to Persona Q, but there's a lot more varied ideas... And that are really good in Bravely Default that makes it a better game. It's not true. It takes the I traditional am. RPG and turns it on. Does that make sense? I, I guess. because yeah, because I, I feel like they 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 both play it sort of safe. To be fair, um, you know, I don't... it does. It's because Bravely Default is more about the roots. Persona Q just takes the best of Atrium Odyssey and injects Persona into it. From what I've understand of it, I, I think that it's just a very big. 
this is more of a genre, of, uh, not a genre, but like the game that that subgenre problem, the dungeon crawler problem, is that Persona Q. There's a I feel like there's a very clear line between you are doing now gameplay, here is everything else, and it just doesn't feel like it meshes well. Where there's a really, really clear divide. Yeah. Yeah, there's a very clear divide. Here is oh your gameplay. Okay, now um, move a couple steps, move into the next room. Here's a story. Watch for five minutes, you know, because you need that break, uh, uh, pace broken a bit with something new to mix it up. Okay, and you're gonna do more dungeon crawling. Maybe you go back to the shop and whatnot. It just, it just doesn't feel like it meshes I'll well. Say this, though. Okay, I want to. Is that I... not the way that Persona is designed anyway? You know, Persona with its sure. Its, I mean, its yeah, sure, sure. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's a problem with that sub genre. That's what okay, I'm saying. It's a problem. <laughs> These are supposed to be our games. We're talking about the top, top spots, right? Well, yeah. I want to I want to start with the things that I like about both games, you know, rather than the criticisms, which there are certainly several. Okay, fair so, enough. Yeah, Bravely Default uh, is you know game game mechanics wise, it you know starts with the job system. It's kind of like a spiritual successor to Final Fantasy V in some ways. You know, similar you know job system. You have a main class, you have a subclass that you can use abilities from, and you know in this you style of the jobs. You level right. jobs. jobs level up kind of independently of your character and kind of the meat of the you know the enjoyment at least in my view is that you have a you have a party of four and you kind of have to come you have to you have to coordinate your party with a very set of jobs that complement each other you know and the sub abilities and the abilities right and the sub abilities and the weapons you know having all these things complement each other to build your basically your your strategy and how you approach battles and bosses and things like that um, so that's there's kind of a lot the of core. pre-game. There's a lot of pre-battle elements that you right. have to take into account. That's... While we're talking about that, one of my favorite parts of the game was actually the extra boss battles in the later parts of the game. Yes, that, yeah. they're kind of like challenge battles in a sense, where you're fighting a group of the bosses from the earlier parts in the game, and you kind of have to figure out how to counter them uh, by your party setup. You know, in fact, even if you're level 99, uh, which to be quite honest isn't that hard to get to in this game. Um, you have you, you're not going to win if you're not coordinated Prepared. well, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 a lot of preparation where it's sort of different, but it's preparation in the same sense that you're doing in like Shin, Shin Megami Tensei Four. It's a lot of pre-game, like right. like before yeah. you go into it, you're like, shit, what do I need to fucking do? Right. It's kind of a, it's 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 more of a meticulous level of strategy. And then not, not talking about mechanics, but it also has a great, fantastic soundtrack as we decided yes. on earlier. Um, it's got that art style that is reminiscent of kind of earlier Final Fantasy, but also in that, uh, I don't know what you call it, chibi. Not really chibi, but... It's cute. It's, 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 well, super it's, it's very artistic. It feels very yeah. painterly. Yeah, it's got that deformed kind of like fantastic art style. You know, it's not realistic. It's not Nomura. Uh, <laughs> I, I, think, I think visually, though, like the style, the background of the city and stuff like that, it's not something you see now nowadays. It anymore. has a really, uh, it has a really painterly look. That's the word I would yeah, use. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's it, you don't see that nowadays anymore, like at all in RPGs. You you see the flat textures. You see very, um, very like meticulous um, details and stuff like that. But you, you really don't see a game using art assets the way you see in Bravely Default at all. And I'd say, you know, if if we talk about art specifically, I think. Uh, Bravely Default hides and makes use hides the limitations of and makes use of the hardware um, in a much better way than uh, than Persona does. If I'm definitely, honest. that's that's I don't. Oh, that's, that's visually, hard to agree with. Sad. That's, not, um, that's not hard to uh, disagree with, or it is hard. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. um, now the the one criticism that Bravely Default, you know gets often is that the second half you know it, because of a design choice i guess you end up having narrative to design it's, it's more of a narrative design problem oh, than yeah. it is you you have to repeat you know dungeons three or four times uh, just based on the way that the the narrative works and it's 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 tedious i remember it taking kind of you know a whole afternoon uh, a couple of hours to get through this you know repetitive part and it wasn't it was not fun um, now, does that how how much does that drag the game down? 
That, yeah, that's that's my question because that's 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 my only problem. With I mean, the the, game. the gameplay, of course, remains pretty great for a job turn-based party turn-based party-based job system. The music remains great and things like that. It's just this weird decision to have to redo things, uh, the dungeons. Um, I think they just tried to like arbitrarily just drag it out so they could be right. like, oh yeah, this is like you know such and such hour long RPG. Now, Do you really think that's what it is? I think I, I think they literally just went a little bit too overboard on the story, and they're like, right. the, I I think it's kind of both. Like it does, uh, it does tie into how the story works. Which, to be quite honest, I don't think the story is a strong point in this game. It's, but it's not offensive either, though. Right. I don't think it's like yeah. uh, awful, but it's just not really the strength. But it, it, that decision was, I think, largely based in how they wanted the story to work out. So. Um, now you can turn the uh, the battle the rate down <laughs> to zero, um, which it still takes some, quite a bit of time to get through it. Just literally, just the act of going to the dungeons and going to the end uh, of four times in like three or four dungeons each. But I think that was a nice feature because you don't see games doing that. I think the... could, could you imagine doing that in the like the original release in Japan? Oh which, God, no! Oh God, no! <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that's but also. The, Sorry, fact that they, the fact that they added that, I think, speaks a lot to their uh, to their do. design. I, I don't know how much of that was Nintendo. To be fair, I'm, I, I think that feels like a very Nintendo thing for them to look at that and say, "Yeah, you you got to you've got to add this." Um, but it's a really good feature. Yeah, it's. I, it's hard I think that design. I think that design speaks volumes that they oh. knew what they were sort of going for. I feel like though. One thing uh, I didn't mention earlier was the whole brave and default system. Adding I mean, this, should, I should have mentioned this earlier, but it's not just like a copy, copy pasted job system from, like Final oh, Fantasy V, cool. because it does have that braving and defaulting, you know, system where you can. Uh, it's an your, extra resource to manage in battle. You're not just yeah. using your magic points. You have certain, to waste an entire turn. Use it. Uh, certain moves use it, and also just, you know, that risk reward type of idea where. You can get a lot of extra attacks in, you know, but at the expense of having you're trading away basically future attacks to use them now type of thing. I know uh, I when I was playing a couple times, like I was in a one particular boss battle and it was like very towards the end, and I had a couple of brave points stocked, um, and I'm like, okay, I think I have enough uh, damage to take him out, and so I used all my brave points and I attacked, and of course he's still alive by like a slumber health. Like, like fuck, I miscalculated. Like four or five. He just wipes me, and I'm like, fuck. Right. <laughs> here's yep. the thing I don't and and, and, and hearing you guys because because obviously it came out in Europe a little bit earlier so it's been quite a bit longer since I played it but hearing you guys talk about this and having recently played Persona uh, as much as I love Persona Q and as much as I love the characters and stuff I, I couldn't talk this passionately about Persona Q uh, whereas even just hearing you guys talk about Braley Default even though I played it like 13 months ago is reminding me and making me... It gets me so giddy. The game like, came I out a long time ago for you guys. Like, Final <laughs> Fantasy Fiesta V is going to happen forever. But, like, I wait the day, like, people really, truly experience this game and, like, use this as a basis for doing really cool runs. Especially because you can use the encounter rate to control some stuff. Like, there's some really neat ideas that you can do with it. Right. And, okay. And, and the, the multiplayer, not multiplayers, like the... Um, oh, yeah. That feature is awesome, like you're screwed like like you can't beat this boss you have a crush you can use um another player's like special move to like wipe a boss like literally one hit KO them it's a little yeah. bit you know it's a little bit unbalanced but it's, yeah it's kind of sure. a, I mean, it's, but... it's optional but it's it's just kind of a nice little thing like you know oh i'm friends with kaios 90 I, i'm going to use his ring of bells samurai attack <laughs> You know? Oh, it's so shitty. <laughs> and, and, and even and it's even just kind of a couple of like silly things like you can name the attack whatever you want. Um, I remember. Uh, you can choose the dialogue. Right. You can you can like change change what they say and change the attack name. Just kind of silly things like that. Yeah. You um, can customize what effects the special moves really do, which is which is neat. I, I remember I remember uh, some, uh, summoning someone's uh, Agnes's archer. Ability and they like they named it a pun instead of unacceptable, which is the word what she says all the time. They're like unacceptable, you know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <Holy It's> just... <laughs> which is kind of a clever pun, but it's just it's kind of it's just kind of a neat little thing. Um, 
The more but, that I think about it, the more so, that I think this. That, 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 it sounds that, like that, you got to win. Oh, okay, let me let me talk about let me talk about let me talk about yeah, Persona you, you, a little bit. You, you also reviewed Persona, so yeah, I mean, right. I played it, but talk, yeah. So Persona, I'll start with the things I like about it, and the reason why it belongs in the top three. Uh, unlike some of the other more recent Persona games, it offers quite a bit in terms of the player agency, in terms of what you can do. Uh, kind of like the job system in Bravely Default, you have a lot of characters to work with, you like 14, and you have to pick five of them to put together. Um, and so each, yeah, each, well, each character has their own strengths and weaknesses and, you know, what they are good at uh, and what they're useful for. Um, so that's, that's right. Too. So that's one element of things you have to consider. Then each character can be given a sub persona to, you know, modify their abilities, give them more abilities and things like that, which is pretty different from like Persona three and four, which you can only really do that with your main character. You can um, offset some of the weaknesses like certain characters have, which is right. really nice. Um, and with that, so kind of like what I was saying about party coordination and Bravely Default, there's an element of that too in Persona Q in terms of who you choose and what personas you have on them. Um, and so there's a lot of combinations you can put together. Um, so there is this level of strategy um, there as well. I think the dungeon yeah. crawling, I think the dungeon crawling is solid. Um, now I haven't actually played any of the Etrian Odyssey games, but I have played. Uh, SMT Strange Journey, which is also kind of a Etrian Odyssey uh, blueprint. As well? oh, yeah, I, I did play Demon Gaze. I played Dungeon Crawlers, just not Etrian Odyssey. Right. Um, but I, I think the dungeon crawling is, you know, solid. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, puzzles. Um, the, the, one, one, one interesting thing that I, uh, from what I gather, is different from Etrian Odyssey is the, the use of these FOE enemies. Not only do they kind of work as extra challenging bosses, you know, that you can optionally fight, but they also work as puzzles that you have to surpass in the dungeon. So that's kind of a neat, you know, element there. Um, so I think the dungeon crawling is solid. I think the battle system, uh, you know, this player agency is a very high positive point. Um, but I guess if I had to pick one thing that I didn't like about it, uh, and I didn't really realize this until I, until I was reading what other people kind of did, uh, is that, the game is not very well balanced. Uh, there's kind of two things to mention. Uh, you get magic attacks and physical attacks, but there's not very much reason at all to focus on magic. It's just underpowered and overshadowed by physical abilities. Right, and the resources cost a lot. Right, that, that, that's, huh. a, that's, a big, that's a big reason for it. So, like, it's, while the option is there in terms of player agency, in terms of what you can do, there's really, you're kind of handicapping no yourself. to do it. Yeah, you're handicapping right. yourself for doing that. And also, like, some things are just overpowered significantly. And not, not you know, some hard-to-come-across combination of things. Because in any game like that, you can usually break it somehow. But status effects, like poison, are... They, they break the game kind of easily and simply. Yeah, <laughs> like, and they work on bosses really well, the, the, too. Apparently, the final boss, you can use panic on, which is basically confusion, which basically will destroy him. Yeah, and, you can kill it. You can make it kill itself. Like, the hell. And like, even I, I remember the final. Actually, the the kind of the, the boss you can fight after the main game. It's it's Elizabeth, um, final fight. Like I remember, I basically just stuck poison on her, and I just defended for, uh, huh. a while, yeah. and then I win. So, uh, there's just a couple of balance things that I think. Well, like, well, Bravely Default, you can certainly come together with parties that are, you know, Absolutely really... broken. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. I, that's the thing. Whenever you offer so many different permutations of how you can put these, how you can coordinate the parties, you're bound to come with, up with some combination that's just hard to... that just steamrolls everything. But I think Persona Q is a little bit more fault at fault with that. I um, think part of that has to do with design. I sort of want to talk about, like... I sort of want to dial back to the weak, like, magic... Like, you said it was sort of weak, and, it, you know, there's really no option to use it. And the thing is, like, um, magic is useful in, like, exploiting weaknesses. I think that's, right. that's the point of magic in all the Persona, Persona games, really. Uh, yeah, especially it's to get them knocked down. And then, yeah, yeah, it's to get them knocked down. And they, they actually have a really clever way. I thought it was absolutely smart once I, uh, once I figured out why they really had sub-Personas give Grant extra MP is because... Yeah. You can use the MP and it regener it regenerates the amounts of the the MP that the sub persona has for the next fight. 
Yeah, the so problem is, is that crazy. the magic still costs too much, so you can only use one round of that magic really effectively, and everything else costs so much. So, like, it's a good des design decision, but there's they, they take they, it's a good step forward, but they take two steps back in just making things work. And like for the couple of to, to, to jump onto that uh, physical skills, uh, there's several that have an element attached to them. So rather than using you know Agidine, they'll use a fire slash, which uses H, uh, HP instead of SP. But HP is so much easier to regenerate. Because um, you can kill. Yeah. 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 So it's, I do, I do think there's that, a, a little a couple of balance issues like that. And another thing. Just inherent with the series, basically, because Persona 4 and 3 both do that. Right. Well, well I mean, I mean, there, it was, there was more, definitely, there was definitely more danger in using, um, in using HP attacks in the original Persona series than here. Right. Yeah, because you die. No, no, no. It's because the amount of health it gives you in the game from sub Personas is so much greater than it is MP and also, anything. And also, oh. physical attacks in the earlier Persona games, they didn't have elements attached to them, so it really, it was not very often that you could hit a weak spot with them. So you were just kind of hoping for criticals, whereas in this game, like, oh, just use a fire slash, and every single time it'll it'll boost your character. Um, right. So it's, Boost, it's not which, exactly Boosting safe. is a cool mechanic, by the way. Boosting is, a, I think, is really neat, because it... Right. Yeah, I think Persona Q does a lot of things well. It might sound like we're harping on it a bit. That's, yeah. Well, but, so, I mean, the, so bottom the, line, but, Persona Q or Bevy default, It's though. bravely default, like, but I, I do okay. want to speak to this one thing about boosting. It's another instance where it's one step forward and two steps back. Um, you, you have so many opportunities to boost, but so many enemies have AoE attacks that makes the boost completely moot point sometimes. You're like, why do I even have this? Like, Especially, like, especially late in the game. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm never, I, I never get to use it. Like, the hell? It's so annoying. Well, I'd imagine with the boosting, it's at the end of the battle, you get the bonus. No, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. Boosting is uh, when you use a weakness or you do a critical attack. I thought it's that if, if you get boosted, then if your party gets boosted, then they, they get a bonus at well, the Well, they end get a bonus battle. at the end. Yeah. Yeah. They get yes, yeah. but like, it's, yeah. it's the in-game battle. It's the in-battle mechanic that really matters. And so, like, just, for example, oh. for example... But in the well, middle for of the example, battle, one of the characters the I used a lot was Yukari. She was a mage. She's a mage-type character and healer. And like, okay, so this 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 enemy is weak to wind, so I'm gonna do Garudine, uh, which is their wind attack, and I'm gonna do a lot of damage, but it does take that ba that basically eat up my SP that I'm getting from my sub persona, um, and now she's boosted, which means she, if she stays boosted, I can use Garudine again at no cost, which is which is great, but by the end of the game, you know, 80% of the time, somebody has an AOE attack and is gonna hit her, and that'll remove it, that'll remove the boost, so I kind of have to spend points again to use. Gyrodyne again, and that kind of you can't do that consecutively. You can't you can, do that for multiple do that battles. Like three or four times, and that's it. And so by the next battle, you're out of SP, and that's that. You, that probably just helps in early part of the game, but then towards the end. I of mean, the it doesn't even really help in the beginning of the game either. Like it's a good design idea. They just have other stuff that clashes with that design idea. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, this is, I actually didn't really think about this until we are talking about these two games in tandem, but Persona, it, like, once you beat the game, there's, like, once you beat the main game, there's barely anything else to do. So you, you beat the final boss, and I think there's, like, one more boss you can take on, which is not really a challenge. Like I said, I just use poison. Um, and that's it. Whereas Bravely Default has all these extra challenge battles that are totally optional, that are in my opinion, the best part of the game, um, game in terms of the battles. Um, so Bravely Default definitely has an edge in terms of this post-game, quote, com uh, content. I, I mean, not even post-game, replayability, or Bravely Default trumps Persona Q. Sure, you can say there's multiple party combinations, but to be perfectly honest, there are a lot of characters that sort of overlap, and the differences are sort of minute, right. maybe, you know? So yeah, I I did think that actually throughout that game that like why would I use Akihiko in comparison to maybe I don't know like what's a good equivalent Kinji maybe Kanji? No. yeah I know what Aaron would use yeah or Kanji like like I'm like, 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 sure you can say it's different Akihiko moves or whatever but... hey hey now <laughs> by the way Akihiko is actually broken in that game right. just saying like his counter move is ridiculous <laughs> and his strength and speed 
Not don't even judge. That. Just give him give him link moves with Gemini, and he will literally just destroy things by himself. It's dumb and broken. Like, okay. I, so, I actually did. So, I actually didn't use many link moves. You know, I didn't really realize how broken they can be. I mean, that's that's part of the fun, I think, in both games like this and Bravely Default, is you when you just come up with well, finding a combination that is broken is kind of fun. But you know, it's not so fun if you just look up online and you know someone's like, oh, if you put all these moves together, then you can break the game. Like, and that's I don't know. It's it's kind of discovering your own combinations is part oh, of yeah, the fun. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, so let's let's move on then. So it. Uh, Sounds clear winner, Bravely Default wins, runner up, Persona I, I think Q. Both Persona Q and Bravely Default, I think they're both they're they're both very easy to recommend for RPG yeah. fans. It's a very close, oh, very I, close. I, 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 and they both have their just some great strength and they both have some you know, weird faults, but I think just Bravely Default is just a little bit edges it out. Especially especially so, okay, so the, I uh, can get behind that. Got I that? can get behind that. Yeah, it sounds like you guys, obviously, the strengths and weaknesses to both. And Persona fans obviously got the clear choice, but uh, I think we had two great... I mean, I think they definitely RPGs are the one and two in this category. Yeah, so we got those two, and then Terra Battle, bringing it up the rear, as it were, for number three spot as the uh, third runner-up, or the second runner-up, I guess it would be better to put. So now that we've gotten that out of the way... Let's move on to our next category. Our final best full category. Big screen. It's okay. The other, final, other category. A final normal category is best big screen RPG, which is. I mean, console I'm going to expect PC, something right? going on. I would here. say a lot of, I would say the console RPG offering this year was sort of disappointing. We got a lot of numbers. Yeah, we got a so lot of we got Alex... a lot of stuff on this list, but I think what'll happen is there'll be a lot of stuff that's cut very quickly. Yes. And yes. then so let's, we'll let's... be left with. Uh, we'll be Sigurgi left with uh, Dragon Age Inquisition and South Park, probably. We'll be left with five or so that I think are going to be tighter. So on this list is, uh, as you just said, Dragon Age Inquisition, South Park, The Stick of Truth, Transistor makes a return, uh, Wasteland 2 on the PC, Divinity Original Sin, uh, Child of Light, uh, Diablo 3 Ultimate Edition, uh, specifically on the consoles, but also just the expansion in general. Um, two of the uh, at the uh, games... Um, I didn't know there was there was, there, there there was two this year. What? Okay. Yes. Uh, Dark Souls two, um, Disgaea four. Wait. Uh, t- that wasn't Vita. wasn't Disgaea four Vita. It was a re. Yes. Yeah. Why yeah, that's a four. But it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a it was an enhanced remaster included. Get that content. shit out of here. That's dumb. We'll we'll talk about it. Let's continue. Okay. Um, Dark Souls two. Uh, and Tales of Exilia 2. <laughs> I like how you just immediately deleted Valkyrie Chronicles. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, I saw that can, happening. Can but... we remove all, like, not port, but, like, game, like re-releases from that list, possibly? Uh, well, let's, let's, let's talk about what we want to cut. I think... Well, well I think are, there, are, there any, are there any games that are obviously in our top three? Like, I Dragon, Dragon Age, Age Souls, Souls, I've got to be honest, I, I can't see this list without Dragon Age and South Park on the top three. I completely agree. I'd put Divinity up I'd there. I'd put Dark Souls up there. Oh, uh, yeah, Dark Souls But that's too, what yeah, I mean. So I think the debate there. for that third is going to be hot, but Again, I, it's gonna be the same I, thing I as cannot handheld. see this list without South Park or Dragon Age. It's going to be fascinating. It's going to be the same situation as handheld. I can't see this list without South Park or Dragon Age, to be honest. I agree. I, I, I agree. would agree with that. Uh, I'll explain why. Um, Dragon Age is well, is is um, it's a really fascinating, interesting basis of which I think some of the most interesting um, RPGs of the generation are going to come from. Um, in that I think Bioware still got it. I think it's a really, really well built answer to everything that people said about Dragon Age One and Dragon Age Two. Um, the world is that's... absolutely enthralling. Like it's, I think it's really yeah. fun to explore the world. I think it does really good world building, which not many RPGs nowadays I feel do well. Think... And Bioware does it well every single time for the most part. So yeah, and I think it has one key uh, key flaw. But I think that's a flaw that will be discussed when we come to discuss what the winner of this category is, not yeah. if it makes the top three, because I think it makes the top three anyway. That's my opinion. I completely and, agree. And South Park is just... Uh, I, yeah. 
I would say South Park is actually fits go, goes up there in the same vein of as Dragon Age Inquisition, to be perfectly honest. I I'd probably argue that, but <laughs> so let's let's just let's just talk about first what we're cutting because I think it's easier well, for us to for, cut. For example, we have Transistor and Divinity on here. Divinity already beat Transistor in Indy. Yes, so... Transistor doesn't make the top three. No. I I, I don't think I, I think we've cut Transistor. I, yeah. It's already it's, yeah. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. We've already <laughs> great yeah. great game. It's that. worth playing, but I don't think it can stand with these guys. I, I think we can also I... cut Tales of Exilia too. Agree. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, that 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 I still be able to play Tales of That series. came up a few times. I feel like in the first set of uh, of of categories, at some point, it definitely came up in writing, and there was a big long discussion about it. And I feel like everything that was said about the writing in that game kind of bears true for it on the whole as well. Yeah. I bas I basically feel that it has a couple of you know bright spots, but it has a lot of things that are just weird and bad. <laughs> so it's just. Doesn't, I mean, not, I liked not, it. Not, I mean, it, I really enjoyed the game, but I mean, it's not it's not big it's, screen of the year worthy. Yeah, it's I'll definitely take, not that. I'll it's a good game. It's just not like a great game. It is better than Heart Star, though. Take, just saying. Yes. yes I'll, I'll, guess. I'll take Verona. I'll take Verona plus out. I think way. I think both of those should go. I've got to be honest. I I. I would. Yeah, I would agree. That one's just. Zach's that one's gonna also, fight uh, this. No. Zach is a big big guy. Atelier, Asha, and Laji. <laughs> He's gonna fight for it. I I will say I wanna I wanna speak my Go piece ahead. about Esk and Laji first though before you guys just need to cut it just because you're not into it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would say this is that hey, Esk and Laji has. I didn't like it. <laughs> Oh shit, man. Well, let me let me speak no. my piece. You guys spent like hours talking about games I've ever played. I love my piece about Eskenology. <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. Huh? I think I, it's it's not giving the game enough credit for some amazing things that it does. So, for one thing, Eskenology promotes an amazing crafting system that is very easy to get into. Um, it takes some time to, you know, figure out all the mechanics, the way it works but the crafting system is very responsive and this is coming from someone who up until recently hated crafting in RPGs like I would look at it for one moment and just turn away and just not even think about it ever again throughout the rest of the, to the my time with an RPG and that goes all the way back to like Star Ocean 2 and all those other games where they try to make you craft stuff and I could not get into that stuff at all Atelier Escanology is my first real uh, entry into the series and I had an amazing time with it um, and I'll also mention that the combat system in that game, oh my god, is it fantastic. Like, it's, people talk about Final Fantasy X's battle system like it's something great. Uh, that takes that system and puts, like, injects it with steroids. Like, the way that you have your entire party of six party members, they're all on the field. They're not, like, hiding in the background. They're all there. And with a simple button, I can have one of the members from behind come up and either protect... Uh, uh, my party member from being hit or take over their spot permanently uh, for then and then the person who gets rotated into the back recovers health and mana so that that way if I need them later they can come back in and it's got this great combo system where if you build up enough like support points in this bar that's on the side you can unleash like hell on earth like you can continue to go one after the other and it just keeps building and building and building uh, where each person Screens out their own specific support attack until it just completely fills the screen with these amazing moves that just kind of all this bright like explosions and color and all this stuff that's just way over the top that I fell in love with. Um, I will say one thing: it's that without playing Atelier Asia, uh, Atelier Asia before, I didn't get the full breadth of the story, so I couldn't really you know engage with that. But I will say that with the combat system alone, if that system was in more games. I think this genre would be a, in a much better position. It just it was very very fun. So I'll I'll just I just want to mention that about that game that I think that um, th those two things it does well the crafting and the con and the and the combat system is just among the best I've played in years honestly. But you know you guys aren't going to back me up. So no, I'm definitely I, I, I mean to none of us I don't think any of us have played it. But I will say that I have no. heard I have heard similar praise 
for the game from fans. So, uh, you know. Yeah. But I so. I haven't played some of the games you guys were talking about, so I just want to oh. you know, make sure that you guys that, that you know people listening oh, to this I mean, understand I think, I think, that that's why. Not I mean, I think them. it's worth considering. I mean, it's just kind of hard when only one of us five have played it. That's it's my <laughs> job to try to convince you guys, but I don't think I'll win that. Well, battle, so I mean, well, what, what else? What else do we have? <laughs> we have Dark Souls two. Yeah, and Dark Souls two. Sh- so that Dark Souls two is you know. Yeah. Well, that's going to be, again, it's going to be a fight over. But let me kick out yeah, something else. Yeah, I think else. Darren sits on the positive train for that, right? And I said, well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Me too. I, I, I played it. I'm, this is my first oh, old game. Let me, yeah. exactly. What the let, fuck, man? Let me, let me, kick, out, let me right. kick out something else. On a list where Divinity is also on the list. Does Wasteland 2 yeah. still continue to stick around? Well, I'd argue Divinity is the better game next. between that and Wasteland. Yeah. I was going to bring that up with Darren, but yeah. Because so, I, I think Wasteland's good, but I don't think that survives on this list. Like, it's it's still it's still being worked on too. Yeah, so. it doesn't really. Yeah, okay. So actually, no, it didn't waste any time. Yeah, yeah, it's fully out. It, yeah, it didn't make mind. nearly as much of a splash as Divinity did. I think it made more of a splash. It, I think it sold more. Well, it did. It did. A, yeah, it was, but it's, it's, yeah, it's very popular. But everyone's everyone's waiting for Torment, and that's that's going to be the game. Okay, I've really, heard a lot know. more, you know, conversation about Divinity, um, just around. So it's. I think it's just because it was a surprise, but Wasteland 2 has definitely got more people we, we, We've made it because of its uh, reputation as being that is follow true. free. Wasteland 1 is was a great game, so yeah. Okay, we've made it. some cuts. So now that brings us down to Dragon Age Inquisition, South Park The Stick of Truth, Divinity Original Sin, Child of Light, uh, Diablo 3 Ultimate Edition, or Ultimate Evil Edition, whatever it was called, um, Dark Souls 2. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's. I'll call it Child of Light and Diablo 3. Yeah, I'll cut Child of Light. I mean, I reviewed it. I liked it, you know, quite a bit. But uh, kind of like Transistor, it's, it just feels... It, it's a re- it was a really fun, just, like, game to play, you know, if you have some free time on a weekend just to kind of go through it. But, like, it doesn't really have any lasting, you know, appeal. Or... It looks, I think the main thing... Yeah, it looks is great. There, is there a replayability? Got on there, my I haven't played it. Is there a lot of replayability into the game? Pro- because I heard... Actually, there's probably like no replayability. Yeah, it's really okay, just no. Uh, it's it's. it's like, yeah. kind of, I I beat it. It's kind of more of like an experience game, just to kind of play yeah. through it. You know, it's got a, it's got some unique ideas and styles. You know, it's very pretty. Um, I think it's kind of a solid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, coming from a small team at Ubisoft, I think it's worthwhile. But I don't. It doesn't really belong in this conversation. The the nicest thing about it is the way it looks and feels and the attitude behind it all, really. And. Mm. So I think that can go. Mm-hmm. And on the subject of Diablo, um, this is the I fight that I could... Diablo, and, and I think it deserves to be cut, but I sort of want to well, speak well, to the game. Alex, you played it too, right? I, I, I reviewed it, and I thought it was a great um, you know, improvement on everything that came before and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this is a fight that I can absolutely sense that we'll have with Eren next year, which is ultimately that um, that is an expansion pack. And so it probably doesn't sit on this list. Wait, but Reaper of Souls came out this. That Reaper of Souls came out the same year. Oh yeah, it did. Of course it did. It was just an yeah, incredible. Yeah, so I'm, I'm saying, I, like, I heard Reaper that. Soul, I, like I review Reaper of Souls. Reaper of Souls was great. Like I freaking loved the game. It was fantastic. Um, but I don't think it deserves to stay on the list necessarily. Well, so we've kind of decided that Dragon Age and South Park are in the top. Our top three. So, well, it's top or, five or, or top whatever. Well, I mean, right but it's staying. It's staying. We, 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 we haven't. Well, I, I, we haven't. We haven't. I mean, we're, we're going to eventually get down to three, and I, well, I think we decided, or at least we're pretty certain it, that Dragon Age and South Park are going to be in there. It would be I mean, an upset, we, I think. It would be a surprise, put it that way. If well, one, if I could honestly we'll argue that Divinity could be there over South Park. Right. I would say Divinity is number one, but that's Ooh. just me. <laughs> I'll put, I'll See, I've got to be honest. In 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 the break that we had, um, I've been thinking very very hard about South Park versus Dragon Age, and there's a there's a, a very interesting debate about um, RPG design and 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 brevity between those two games. In that South Park is just a a perfectly pitched experience that lasts pretty much the perfect amount of time it's you know 20 25 hours it never the combat never gets old it never stops being funny um you know there's a decent spread of 
content throughout you know you're constantly being rewarded new summons every x number of hours it, it's all very well spread out it's like a good theme park ride like, yeah um dragon <laughs> age no dragon so. age almost has no respect for your time like it's like you know but i think those you, are I, fuck very... you i've got i've got so much content and for <laughs> me personally you know I, I really enjoyed uh i really enjoyed dragon age a lot but i, I actually maybe liked South Park doing... a little I bit I think those more. are two very dis- different design directions, though. Like, Dragon Age is meant to have a, like, Dragon Age has the, uh, has a recognizable world in the sense that, yes, there were two games before it, but it's a game, it's a, it's a world that you're supposed to be immersed in and then you, that you're not necessarily supposed to be familiar with. And you take the time to learn the stuff, to really get to know the lingo. Uh, but, 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 but here's would... the thing, you know, I think I had as much fun exploring South Park and Canada. Um, but was that, what was that <laughs> as, I, as, I, as, I, did, that as I did exploring <laughs> Vadas, to be honest. So the question sure, but is, that's your exposure to the license, though, right? Like well, you... no, I don't think it's to do with that. It's just like the way it's a current. It's because the thing is, you know, I would the, say the writing South is Park... immaculate. I think that's why it's good. Is the writing well, is immaculate? We... In South the Park, that's good. Right, we we already decided that South Park has won our writing our, our writing award. Yeah. Um, now, so there's definitely a clear difference in the pacing and length of these two games. Would we say that the pacing slash length of South Park suits that better than the pacing of length of Dragon Age suits that? I think Dragon I'd Age has so. a huge amount of potential to outstage Welcome. Uh, I I as someone who spent. 25 hours in Dragon Age, and I've not gotten a Skyhold yet, but spent like 15 hours with South Park, I think it was about, before I beat that game. I definitely felt like Alex said that it, it you know, it consumes your it life. thanked me for my time while I was playing it. Like, it was, it, it really, it made sense. Like, I spent as much time as I wanted to in that game. As you said, it didn't overstay its welcome. I felt like with Dragon Age, it was trying to, like, grab at things to get find me things I, to do a lot of it felt like filler and it just felt like the, it was it's, a the, it's, it's the yeah. peter jackson problem right of of yeah of, yeah you know i uh, i probably spent five times as much time with with um dragon age as i did with south park and i adored dragon age very very much as my review and stuff indicates but um south park is actually probably the more memorable experience to me in every sense i mean i think it's paper mario-esque combat um it's just i mean fuck you know the props have to be given to obsidian who you know we were asked to make us out we were approached by trey and matt directly because that was how it happened they approached a studio and then they went and found a publisher and they said yeah we the idea we have is to make it like paper mario i mean what the fuck that is such a weird out there thing for that that is kind of you know i I think we should also bring it back to the context of the award it's best big screen experience so on the big screen uh the way it looks looks and the way it plays well i mean that's not fair to south park because south park's supposed to look like that well i'm not dissing south park i think south park looks amazing i'm saying like we also have to consider like the context of the award is that on the big screen does south park the way it it's like you said. It's watching an episode of South Park. So you're watching it on your TV, kind of like I mean, it's it's obviously supposed to emulate that. Um, so w- looking that, and then versus Dragon Age, that obviously is supposed to evoke a more you know sharp fantasy feel with its you know. I, th- I think most people would argue. Like crazy I think most people would argue really that the presentation in Dragon Age is great, but like South Park, you know, it had that extra you know hurdle of trying to emulate a TV show. And we're, yeah. you know, in terms of like its uniqueness in its presentation, you know, that they have they had to capture that. Where you know, so you know like, I look at screenshots. I, that... I look at screenshots, and I played Dragon Age, and like for a while there, before I started playing it not long ago, um, I couldn't tell the difference between that and like an Elder Scrolls game because uh, it, it kind of it's that you know that. That fantasy right. feel the art, is, is the art the style it doesn't. I mean, it, the the game looks great, but the art style is not necessarily. It doesn't like. It doesn't stick out, I guess. Really, yeah, I, not, not, I not think really. it's. I think it does I, stick I, I, out. It's Bioware with an out of fantasy. Well, but like, it's, it's Dragon Age. It looks like a Dragon but, Age. But I mean, game, to be fair, I think going back, like a lot of the callbacks to South Park, what makes it great is that it uh, it's a very good interactive playability of like the show and. 
I think that's I think that's a big fault to a degree because all, the reason why it's like that is not necessarily I feel like a design decision as it so much it is a writing decision and I think that's South Park's stronger suit hence why we gave it you know best writing and a, part of what makes a game game is it's the playability and there's so much content yes there's a lot of filler content in Dragon Age but the amount of replayability, the amount of interaction, the amount of world building, writing and gameplay, gameplay, the amount of exploration you can do, the cool sites you can see. I mean, I guess you can say they're very close to like the Elder Scrolls game, but there's a lot of landmarks that are really neat and stand out. Um, there's a lot of historical value put into certain locales. Like I think it matters. I think that I think that speaks to the scope and the actual like grandness of Dragon Age that is far and Far and above, leaps and bounds better than than see something like South Park. Uh, the, when you said see, the, best writing for South is, Park, the first thing I thought of was that he calls you Sir Douchebag when you try to put your name in. That's the it's, first it's, thing it's, that it's popped often, in my head. It's when often I the little things in South Park, though, like how the the the, yeah. the optional collectible is uh, is Chin Pokemon. Yeah, and, and it's such a perfect yeah. video gamey because it's it's a reference not only to an episode, a great episode of South Park, but also with the Nintendo reps who distract people with by saying they have a tiny penis, but the but it's also you know a great reference within video games itself, and the game is so self-aware. You know, I think about the sequence when you're on the alien ship and it's forcing you to track back and forth between rooms, and it's mocking oh, it's God. mocking the fact that it's forcing you to track back and forth between rooms, and it's mocking the fact that that's a trope in video games, and then you start finding audio diaries and then you're listening to an audio diary of a guy going i don't know why i'm recording this when i'm mortally wounded oh god i'm dying why am i recording this again <laughs> like poking at bioshock but see, that's more like. writing than it is playability it, it is, no but it is but that writing, leads but it's all the experience as well and i think yeah, that's the point that dragon age misses a lot of is that it's yeah. lore and it's story is just everything bioware has done before its story is literally every bioware game ever done before but You're that's the, the chosen main one it's build well, the army his... It, it falls into the same trap as well that once you do the mini quest for your followers, it kind of or the people that you you party with, it's they kind of fade into the right. background, and so yeah. not enough work was done on fleshing that yeah, out either. Of... And so it's like fleshing out that world about the the characters in that story that you're trying to tell. That's also a problem I think Dragon Age has. Perhaps we should maybe. Uh... I mean, we still have a third spot <laughs> that we want to. Because I, because I, I, <laughs> I I'm going to prop that up as better because, than because this is the it. thing. I almost feel like the debate we're having now is actually the what wins debate rather right. than the. the I don't even. I don't, I, so. I don't. I I don't think so either. I think it's that South Park is in the is why it's why it's going to be top three. I I would personally. I think Divinity is a better game than. I'd put both Divinity and Dark Souls two above. Yeah, because we still have, we still have See, Dark Souls two and the okay, Outlaw. So, so here's where oh. I stand on Dark Souls two, which is and it, 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 it and I don't like Dark Souls two. And, and it's gonna be a it's gonna be a single sentence, which is why I don't think it should, I don't think it actually deserves to make this top three, which is that it's a worse game than Dark Souls one. Well, okay, I'm that, gonna I'm gonna that uh, is I would, a I would, we're talking about the context. Like that. I would go though. beyond that. And say the design of Dark Souls two is questionable many times. I would say that. What do you mean? To be even more specific. I mean, the idea, it's the same sense that, like, it takes a step forward, but, like, two steps back. Like, a lot of, there's a lot more weapon, uh, weapons uh, in the game that you can use, but they don't really feel satisfying to really use them. Um, I think that's more of a subjective thing, though. Okay, fine, fair enough. Um, the uh, idea... Uh, but well, we, we should be speaking as, as ourselves. We're not talking about, like, what other people think about these games. I, it should no, be but no, but there are objective qualities to the game. Let's, so, like, um, yeah, but the let's, idea... Let's put that aside, though, yeah. Let's not talk about, like, what other people think yeah. about Dark Souls 2. The yeah, design, like, Simon, the obviously, design, your opinion on it. I want to hear it. I don't think this is uh, fair. I don't think anyone should do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, you, should, you should give the game for its own merits and really try to look rarely back on its sequel when judging like the objective qualities of the game because when you're judging the objective qualities of the game you're really judging the objective qualities of the game's franchise and its legacy so it's the design of dark souls one is immaculate like especially in map design and that's not the case here in dark souls 2 
It's no. not. So I have not. I have not played Dark Souls two. Can you be specific? Specific, like what? Yes. Why is the map design it's, worse? It's more. It's segmented. It's very yeah. segmented. Dark Souls one was more of a world. It's very yeah. segmented. Um, you really have this idea of going back to Majula as a hub for two. You know, Majula is a hub where you can do a lot of things. You can level up. You can meet characters and stuff like that. In Dark Souls one. You didn't really have that. Um, you really felt like each fire, a bonfire you went from location to location felt like a true checkpoint. Here, it just feels like, oh, great, I finally got to a checkpoint. Oh, wait, now I gotta waste 30 seconds loading up this stupid Majula place to do shit. And there's not even that much to do in Majula. Like, what the fuck? That's... I just want to point out that flaw is completely eliminated on PC because the loading screens are like five seconds. I'm just saying they're, they this add is, I did layers. Play it on that version, they, yeah. <laughs> they add layers of meaningless action and complexity to it. Like Majula, in the end, is no. It's no different than having something to do in, say, a bonfire already. And the characters that reside in Majula, yes, they have lore. Why don't you just? Why do they have to be in Majula? Why can't you just leave them there in the locations you found them, or you find them again in other locations, which Dark Souls did? Like there are design decisions that were made in Dark Souls One that that doesn't make sense in Dark Souls Two. It literally now, feels like they took a step back. I did. I'll complete. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, again, I have not played the game, so I'm not speaking. I have to speak from hearsay, uh, but. Um, one thing that one com one comment that I heard comparing Dark Souls One to Dark Souls Two is that Dark Souls Two, like when you have various areas in the game, say like a fort or whatever, I don't know. Again, I don't know what they are. Like you yeah. kind of go through it and then you kind of you complete an area. Those three words put together, you complete an area, and then you're kind of done with it, and then there's like no reason to go back. It's just kind of like a, a thing you do. Whereas Dark Souls One, you never really complete an area. You just there's just several different locations and locales that are around. They're more seamless, maybe less segmented, as you said earlier. Yeah. Um, it's I, a cool I, shortcut. Oh, I can go through this way. It's neat. I can waste time. I don't have to whereas, waste time. like you, you, you might find yourself revisiting areas, you know, more than once um, for various things. Whereas Dark Souls Two, you kind of finish it once and then never. You never go there again, type of thing. I, I, again, I'm just kind of speaking from something I know. No, that is exactly thinking. how it is designed. It's a, it's a less dynamic game than the first game. And I think a lot of that was done in service of, uh, of trying to make it more accessible. But I do think something of what made Dark Souls and indeed Demon's Souls before it so special is a little bit watered down as a result. I also... I, I'm, sorry, go ahead. I just don't think it's as good a game as the as its predecessor. I, I completely that's not the argument for it being on this list, though, because Dark Souls yeah, is one of the be. greatest RPGs of all time, in my opinion. And even though it's not as good, it's still an incredible game, and I honestly think it triumphs over Dragon I, Age in many ways. Fair enough. Yeah, we should but be I comparing the, Dark Souls two to the other choices in this, not not to. Okay, yeah, but I still think that map design is flawed. It's extremely flawed. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's extremely flawed. I, I think that's to, kind to of... Put, uh, to, put, to put it another way, okay, well, I've just cut Diablo because it's clear that that is not part of this argument. Yeah. And, right. we're, down, and we're down to South Park, Dragon Age. I, I also think... Divinity. When I say those names out loud, yeah, and considering how strongly Zach has spoken about Divinity and how strongly I feel about myself personally about both dra about Dragon Age and South Park, Dark Souls is the one that I look at and I go... Eh. As, as someone who beat Dark Souls 2 and loved it, um, I do know that some parts of that game did feel like a little, like a drag. I'm not saying it's a bad game, friend, I'm just saying it's a particularly stacked I, I, list. Yeah. I, I think it's a great game. I just know I'd, I'd have a stronger argument for Divinity than I would Dark Souls 2. I also think the climactic moments of <clears throat> the game in, the, in Dark Souls 2, which are the boss fights, they are not climactic at all. <clears throat> the first what? They're easy. No, it's, they're not, it's not, not, not even an I've easy problem. It's not an, literally. It's not even a matter of difficulty. It's it's a matter of design. It's fundamentally flawed. Where they think what they think the, making the game difficult it, uh, during boss fights was let's send literally five dudes at you and see how you that's manage every all fight, of them. Though. That's that's the that's exception, like not the rule. That is ex that yeah. no, that is the rule because that's how nope. it happens for so many of the boss fights in the game. That literally only happens for like, like two or three boss fights. 
Yeah, like the rats, and then like that the when you get to that I forget the name of the boss, but that run room, and you got like a bunch Dude, of people faces, coming at you at once. Whatever crap. And the okay. two guards. Second problem with the bosses, they all act the same. They, first, the AI pretty much acts the same way, I guess, but the there are no various moves. All of them have this wide, wide swing attack. Like there's no unique attack about them at all. There's no unique stats, but there's like only maybe three or four that really stood out in that game. Bosses that were truly unique. Whereas, how many bosses stood out in Dragon Age? <laughs> I don't remember any of them. That's the thing. Well, I mean, <laughs> like my with problem with Dragon, with Dragon Age, Age is that they're, the they're, combat they're... system is completely broken. No, there's well, already well, classes. Dragon Age, mashy, a yeah, lot of the mashy. strength during boss fights comes with managing the terrain. Managing the tactical camera, like using what resources you have. Oh, I never use the as a, as a fan of tactical. I never. I, use the I, tactical I, I, camera. No, I I'm gonna, like I'm gonna come out there and say that I think if there's a weak part of that game, it probably is it is the combat. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very mashy. Unless I guess if you play like on the harder difficulties, maybe Fine, it would be a little bit more of a challenge. But arcane well, please, right, if, we're, if we're talking, broken. okay, for me, if we're talking about the stages of grief. And, uh, and we're reaching, <laughs> and we're re and we're reaching bargaining. Like, I would be willing to not see Dragon Age in that top three, but only if South Park won. I I would fight Divinity over South. Park. I would fight South, South Park, Park over Divinity any day. As much as I love Divinity, I think South Park is a is the one I'd rather go back to. Like, and that's saying something. I love Divinity. It'll still be in the game of the year contender, yeah. so I'd, I'd be willing I, to see about that. I, 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 I don't do know, I just Star can't Park. see Dark Souls 2 up there as a top 3 when th there are so many questionable design choices in Dark Souls 2. I think, I, I love Dark Souls 2 for its, for its, keep mind, for its keep design, keep in, its, its music. And all the DLC did come out this year as well, which was all very yeah, good. It was. Which I, fixed I, a lot I of played, the problems you're mentioning now, Simon. Yes. C keep in mind also, Zach. You know, you're talking about the overall winner in the in the final category. Um, that yeah, you know, if, if indie RPG if, though, Divinity, yeah, so yeah, if we're gonna yeah, decide yeah. That. What I'm saying is, is if the is if the South Park, for instance, beats Divinity in this, Divinity can't beat South Park in the next category. Well, who says that? Well, no, he's, logic he's won in indie that. RPG. Log logic says that because. I would disagree. What? I would say that it's uh, if we're talking about big screen, because in the context of the award, going back to that, it's that on the we're talking about the big screen. It, it's that, but if we're talking about overall, you know, whatever overall includes you big talk screen. About, it's, I think the yeah, overall includes game. big screen though. So if South Park comes ahead of Divinity, because if you want to argue for Divinity overall, you need to argue for Divinity for this. Here, let's here. Zach, um, explain, then I, I guess I gotta wipe my hands because I'm pre I'm apparently not gonna win if we're gonna <laughs> no, go. No, I'm that gonna explain way. logically. You have two races. Player one and player two are in race one. Player one beats player well, two. Wait, for... Player and then and then in race two, there's player three and player four. Player three beats player four. And then now it's a battle wait, between wait. player one and player three. Player two can't. I would say Divinity is better than Bravely Default. Okay, I mean, me, where, where let, we're let, going with okay, this? Let me explain. The, cause the thing is, if I was going to say big, big screen is going to be the best big, game big, of the year, big, then big, we can big end there. No, 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 that's not true no, because no, 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 no. Fire won last year. Yeah, because... I'm, they, I'm misunderstanding of what the, exactly... The understanding of what's going on is, you imagine we've got these three categories today with, when we come out at the end of them, nine games. Now, those nine games, any of those nine games can appear in our final three for the overall. However... It wouldn't make sense for um, the runner-ups of the categories for, 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 for a game to come right. ahead of so, for a game to come ahead of another game that it's failed against. The only case this exists in is Divinity, because if Divinity comes below South Park in big screen, it wouldn't make much sense for Divinity to, to come ahead of South Park in, in the, the final. I, I I think it's that you're looking at it. As I agree with Alex. Big screen is still game of the year. All of a sudden, it's that I think it's in the context. It's not the big screen game of the year all that, of a sudden because, because I would say Divinity is a better it's, game. It's not than the big screen is game of the year all of a sudden because because Bravely Default might win, but if South oh, Park was to win, but if South but if South Park was to be, was to win big screen, then. That doesn't mean it's got the best. Divinity, I mean, it doesn't mean that Divinity, it's all of a sudden the best no, game. No, it's saying it's the but best Divinity game would, on a home console or but, a PC. Yeah, but Divinity would have. But Divinity would have to come below South Park just by just by logic. 
You're adding in qualification. I mean, you're honestly, it's that if, if it's going to be between you're, you're adding South Park. In the big screen category, which are missing in the the game of the year category, which is not true. All the category, all the categories and criteria that fall under big screen exist also in game of the year. Very well put. <laughs> By that logic, I, I, then I could, I'd say Divinity. Win game I, of the year. I'm not going to well, win. Okay. I mean, honestly, I've, I've How played about we just out. I think on the, the big screen first. <laughs> Okay, well, well, let's let's. If we define, if it's, uh, then my argument ends there. I mean, that's the whole point that I'm bringing up here is that if if we're going to decide right now, then okay, well, the whole point in the game of the year it, is I'm to not, decide really which win. among small screen, big screen, and indie RPG is going to win game of the year and which ones are going to be runner up. So, Divinity, if if South Park beats Divinity, it can't win game of the year, but it can be runner up. That's what we're saying. Yeah, because because you might say that oh, the top three handheld games are better than all of the other categories. So the final three for Game of the Year is just the top three from Ando. Which can very well happen, but it's not going to. No, but that's just me using... Well, hang on. Okay, so we're in this. We're in, we're in the middle of this debate. All right. Uh, you want to keep Dark Souls 2 on there? I mean, I said my spiel. If you guys disagree, that's totally fine. But uh, saying, like... Aaron's been very... Is Aaron, are you still about? Or do you have an opinion on all this? I <laughs> would agree that... Dark Souls 2 should be removed. From what I'm hearing, and now I'm going to be honest, I haven't really played any of these games much. I, I've watched I a lot of them, it. though. I thought it was, it was okay, but I mean... From what I'm hearing, it seems like Dark Souls has more against it. I don't think it's the game that I it. would go back to, is what I'm getting at. Uh, okay, my question for the Dark Souls crowd is, I'm going to go down this list, right? Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition has a lot of problems. No, 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 no denial. However, it's successfully, very impressively. Um, well, with it, uh, it, Dragon it, Age, you have to think too. Like, it's coming off of Dragon Age Two, which. Had its well, that's what I mean. It's it, it, it successfully um, it oh. finds finds a middle ground between uh, the the very disparate worlds of what people wanted, the people who enjoyed Dragon Age. One and the P and the ne the desire of EA to have a more Mass Effect like experience in Dragon Age, which is what they were going for in two, which didn't go well. So that game actually delivers on that, and it also has, I think, uh, one of the better. Um, I, I should mention that and, 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 and attitudes of open world. So for me, there's that, and then um, South Park. I think is just not only one of the best licensed games ever made. But it's raucously funny, and it's not because I, you know, one of the things I heard you guys said earlier on quite a bit was, well, it's funny, but it's it's that's just writing. But it isn't just writing because the funny in that game is in every fiber of that game's being, gameplay and everything else, and I think that's the impressive thing. Okay, when we're talking about, like, well, obviously we're talking about games of the year, and we're talking a lot about the issues that these games have. A lot of it, especially with South Park and Divinity, they sound like nitpicks at best. Um, whereas Dark I think, Souls, I think South Park's combat system is nothing to talk about. Like it's almost, it's barely there. Like you're talking about sort of Paper Mario style. Like you hit a button and stuff. I think it's barely there. Like there's that no one I, comes I think, to think, and talks crazy about the combat system. I think you have to, think you have to take into account what a game is 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 moving to accomplish though as well, because South Park isn't a game for hardcore RPG nuts. Specifically. Sure, See, but that's what I'm saying. I, it's, it's, I, I it's still think that's it's, 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 and it, it, it has a, it, it, no, no. It is playability because there is there, there's, there's 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 challenge and there's nuance to uh, the abilities of the party members. Half a leg is still a leg, I guess. Whatever. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I guess half a leg is still like. I mean, I, I mean, I just. I don't know. Like, it's it's a game. Like, I'm not I'm not saying South Park: Stick of Truth is not a game. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it is less I, of a I, game. No, but I didn't, I didn't what what makes finish, it a great I, game is less is really not. I didn't. Really I didn't quite finish the point I was making because I never okay, got sorry. to say. Right. And then, and then, and then Divinity. You know, I haven't given. I've only given a, a small amount of time to it. But from the way that that um, from the way that you guys, especially uh, Zach and Darren, talk about it, um, it, it's it's something special. At which point I have to say, okay, then we've discussed why the first free are special what is it about dark souls because i can't help but feel that it's a continuation of what was done before that isn't really as good as what was done before and that's my point about dark souls 
I just from don't what I, think it's an excellent game, period. From what I'm hearing, I, I mean, again, I haven't really played my, the, any of these games significantly. Well, let, let someone who's, who's played it then, Darren, what do you... No, no, I think Adam's making like, a point, though. I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm largely an observer in this, and from what it sounds like, you know, Dark Souls just has more against it than Divinity has, or South Park, or Dragon Age. Um, so it sounds like Dark Souls is the odd man out to me. I think a big part of that, though, is it's very specific things that are wrong with Dark Souls 2. It's, it's not necessarily game-breaking. It's not going and, to and I the game. And I understand that, you know, um, I understand the argument of, uh, you know, all keep in mind, you know, we're comparing the games on this list to each other um, and not to their own uh, predecessors. But what I'd say is I feel similarly about Dark Souls 2 that I would feel about um, if if we were a general gaming site that I would feel about Far Cry 4, which is that I don't think it does enough differently um, or well enough, I suppose you would say, um, from its predecessor to really stand out. Well, I would say that Dark Souls 2, despite some of its shortcomings, is still worlds better than a lot of RPGs out there. Right. No, sure. it's, it's it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's still... My argument it's more is that it's rich. better than Dragon Age. So, are you yeah, arguing that I would, Dragon I would Age that doesn't there. belong in the top three? Yeah, I would say that. Hmm. <laughs> I disagree. Entirely. I... Mm. Have, have you, uh, how much of Dragon Age have you played, Simon? Uh, well, I think I put 30, 40 hours into it now. Okay, because I okay. played Just I played sure 106 hours of Dark Souls 2 this year, and I've played 89 <laughs> of Dragon Age. I'm not saying the numbers determine it. It's that I've played a lot of both. I like both a lot, but I've had a lot more problems with Dragon okay, Age. Okay, fair enough, but I don't think you necessarily and... need to play... A, I, I think once you recognize the design concepts of both games, you don't need... What? Well, that's what he's saying. Is that I think, I think he was just saying that, you know, know, he's put a lot of time into both. Um... So he can, you know. Yeah, he has exposure to both, but I don't think you need like. Well, once you like, once, once you do get a, he's, he's, he's seeing the numbers. Once you yeah. do get a vertical slice of the game, you know, it's. My point being that <laughs> you can go back to Dark Souls and get do a different build and do a different thing, whereas the Dragon Age, a lot of the content is still the same regardless of your class or regardless of your choices. <laughs> this is very, yeah, but there's different classes play time. differently. To a degree, not really. but not as drastically as they would in not, Dark not Souls 2. But, but at the same time, you can make the, the point about, you know, Dragon Age's branching story is obviously going to be uh, is going to be quite different in that respect, too. So, Dark Souls, you know, same dungeons again and again and again. Well, Dragon Age is I also going to be the, the same dungeons again and again. Yeah, but at least narratively has, it's different. I, at I least think, narratively I think the story, the story, the combat is worlds better than Dragon Age. Uh, like, the Dragon Age, the combat boils down to a lot of mashing. And with Dark Souls 2, it's a lot more of a thinking man's game. And it's, like I said, even if you keep on comparing it and comparing it and comparing it to Dark Souls 1, it's that's because Dark Souls 1 is, like, the peak sure, of but the hardcore combat, RPG the genre. Combat system itself and so, is but Dark Souls 2, I... I, I don't think you get enough, you give it enough credit of how well made it even is, even if it goes. Maybe it's because I see. Maybe it's because design. I said the negative too much. The combat system in Dark Souls Two is fine in it of itself. It's the things around it that complement the combat system that makes it just not excellent. And I, we also really have a talk about the online components. Great. The enemy Dark placements Souls aren't great. Like it's just not. It's, I don't think it's a smart game. Darren, you was talking about the online. Yeah, mode. like I was thinking, like the online components in Dark Souls Two worked better than they ever have in Dark Souls One. PvP connectivity, PVE, it's all working better. There's more covenants. There's more stuff to do. That it's a tighter knit community, and I think yeah, it's I'm, 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 but I'm talking Dark Souls Two versus Dark. I'm, I'm talking Dark Souls Two exclusively. I'm just saying, even even without yeah. having even without having Dark Souls One to compare it to, the design decisions in Dark Souls Two aren't great. They're not. Okay, I. The one thing I will say that, you know, if, if it comes down to stuff as granular as this, because I thought it would just be kind of a bit of a given that Dragon Age would, would, would make the uh, the top three. Um, Dragon Age has some... And they're getting better all the time, but it doesn't change the fact that they were there at launch, has some bug issues um, that were, when I was playing, quite frustrating. Um, oh, yeah, there's a lot of bugs. 
and all I can uh, say. I was watching my just a comment. I was watching my younger brother play this over the Christmas break, and he had this hilarious. He had two hilarious bugs. One where his like guy was like moonwalking as he moved his character around, and one where he had like got one of those green torches stuck in his hand no matter what he did. <laughs> oh, I heard. I, I had that problem myself. I know you're so like, talking like, about. He'd like feel wielding his sword, but also be wielding the torch <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> and I think, oh, are, you comparing, are you comparing the technicality between the two games? Well, it's it's everything, isn't it? You just talking it's about everything, the bugs, isn't it? You know, everything. There's, there's also yeah. there's also this weird bug that well, I think they fixed it now, but they had misgendered your character. That <laughs> happened to me actually. Sure. Oh, I mean, yeah, I I'm just thinking the game is the more prone to mistakes you're gonna have. Like, I mean, we're not talking about design right now. We're just talking about little bugs, but. But but what, yeah, but what, but what I'm, but what I'm saying is that if it comes down to something this granular, then suddenly a little bug is a bigger deal than it once than it than it you know than it usually is. I suppose is what I'm saying. Um, and if it comes down to being this tight, I can see. I mean, if that's the case, then that means that every open world game is going to lose to a smaller scope. Yeah, that's not necessarily true. I mean, uh, uh, the larger no. the game is, the more bugs and stuff it's going to have. That's not fair. I would I would say Divinity rarely had any issues with it. I experienced like one. Is Divinity as large a game crash? as large as game as uh, Dragon Age? In yeah, narrative scope, the, I'd the argue team, Divinity is yeah. much no, no, grander in than anything scope, Dragon Age. No, no, in gameplay and design scope, is it as large as Dragon Age? It's huge. Yes. It's oh, it's Divinity base game is like fifty hours. I'm, I'm not asking for the length of game. I'm asking its gameplay ability. Is it, it is its scope and design as big as Dragon Age Inquisition? That's what I'm asking. It's, no, well, it's, it's not. not, it's not it's so not, therefore, it's, it's going to have less bugs. Well, mm. well, but it's the world is huge. I mean, it's a massive game. Like you're, are, are, are you talking about like scope. I mean, if, if you're talking about the map size, but even then, Dragon Age like uh, covers it up by letting you like travel to these different places on that on that war board or whatever the war map so they they kind of hide it a little bit here and there okay I... let's not talk about that anymore i can what, what comes I, down I, like i said i've already said my spiel just... if you guys want to take it off that's fine but i'm just saying that's that's where i stand that's i it. it would be it would be extremely reluctant to me but i can i can see a world where dragon age doesn't sit on this list it would be a very, very close fourth. Um, however, if you're not third, you're last. How, however, um, although we're not doing specific numbering, I think, in the spirit of it, I think, in it, Dark Souls is obviously third. But then the thing that I think becomes the big debate is, is that winner because I genuinely. As impressive as it may be, I genuinely feel like uh, as, as, as impressive as Divinity may be, I genuinely feel like South Park kind of deserves to win. I don't. I haven't played Divinity. But I mean, South I'm, I know is... I'm not going to win the argument. I still think Divinity does an amazing job in letting you do whatever you want. It lets you bend the rules. Like, say for example, you walk up to a door and you don't have enough skill in your lock picking. You decide just to bash that damn thing down by just attacking it over and over until you break it open. There's so many ways that that game lets you break it. Like, say, um, you come across a group of monsters, you decide, oh, I know, I'm going to go back to the crafting table, build all these tables and chairs, and surround the enemies with it, and they can't get through them. <laughs> and then you decide to just proceed to wail on it. You could have <laughs> your one... You could have one person in your party. Let me finish. You have one person in your party uh, walk up, talk to a boss. While he's talking to that person, you can have your other guy come back around, start stabbing him in the back. Like while he's talking in the middle of a dialogue tree, you could just start wailing on him in the middle of this. And so it's it, it it does this amazing thing with like player choice that I think you rarely see. I think um, that's a design policy. Everything so. I think that's a design policy. I, th I think it lets you do it. From what I, like, I think the difference is it lets you do it if you want to. From what I, I don't think that's a... It's not so much a design flaw as that it, it's, uh, it allows the player to do it. I'm sorry? From what I've seen with Divinity, there's almost like this... Uh, the, I don't want to use this word, but it's almost like the between the actual gameplay and the environment, it's like how the environment is incorporated in gameplay in terms of, you know, positioning and items and... You know, just the various objects in the world and how you can use them. It's just, it's like a seamless, you know, it's all part of the gameplay. 
Yeah, right. and it's I would not say it's a design flaw. It's logically it's clearly intentional. How would you approach this encounter? No, no, no. no. The exactly. reason, yeah, no so. I'm not saying it's a flaw. I'm saying it's a design fallacy because every game, every How game is going to be limited. Every game is going to have its own invisible walls and boundaries that the designers intend. Just because the Vinity has a, is a, is a invisible wall is a little farther out or whatnot doesn't make it a better game. I would, well, I would argue that, the gameplay, if though, that because that, tra yeah, that transparency is not speaking, yeah. there, it makes for a different, more captivating experience to, I think, what Zach's trying to argue. Exactly, and it's because that, like, common sense, like, like say you're in a superhero TV show, like, someone transforming, would you sit around and wait for this person to transform before you would attack him? No, you'd run up and kick his ass while he's doing it, and that's kind no, of the way it approaches that's things. That's what I'm saying, there's, a, there's, there's an intended scope in every game it's not real it's it, it doesn't follow the games don't follow real life rules even if it's a fantasy setting there's still procedures that programmers have to code so south park has its own scope it's very i was gonna say that you know south park plays what? by by its own set of rules and right I think, it just yeah happens. but i think it's the, the, it's, the it's the point of a player choice and option that you have the option to do this if you want or you could follow the normal rules of just let this person finish what they're going to say, and then we'll fight. I think that's the point, is that it, it doesn't always have to follow down this very set rules. It's that Divinity lets you move around, lets you break it in a way. I mean, these are things that could be right, patched that, later. But I'm, I'm saying but. that those choices, you can't say just because this game lets you do more stuff is makes it a better game. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not it's, saying. It, I'm not it comparing becomes, it's, Divinity to South it's, Park in this. I'm just. I'm just talking about how what I think is what great about Divinity. Because no, because what it, because what it's really about, let's be fair, is is um is it's really about what a game sets out to accomplish, um, and I have no doubt that, that Divinity is um, extremely competent in accomplishing this open world with consequence and with the ability to to break and game the system in weird ways. Right. But in but terms South Park of what, does it better. But in terms of what South Park sets out to accomplish. It accomplishes it with such, um, such finesse, works. and yeah. uh, the, the, that's why I think it's the winner. I completely agree. I, I, I get that you know you might say well because the combat is it's more simplistic. You know it is it is it is designed to be a more simplistic RPG, um, but you know we've given these awards to more simplistic rpgs before for very much for because they're more simplistic and because they're more approachable and i think I, 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 sorry i didn't I, sorry go I, ahead. Didn't mean, I didn't mean to cut you off or well anyways you yeah, did. Well, <laughs> i was ahead. just thinking that like I, again i haven't played these games so it's this is kind of awkward for me to even be talking about them but i don't think like south park would really benefit from having you know a really deep and complex you know, combat system, right? No. right. So, like, like the combat, not, the combat system not, it has not, is yeah. simple, but suitable, it, it seems like. Like, perfect, it's simple, you know, suitable, it fits. But also, it's really satisfying, and that's the thing that really matters. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think the problem, not, like I I said, the problem I, with that I, game, I, it doesn't, yeah. it's a problem that Dragon Age shares, actually. The, the problem with that game is you can wipe out the challenge a little bit by completing all the side quests you're given. Um, but the... the, the but there's, you know, there's just things about the game and the way that game plays. And it's some of it's mechanical as well. It's things like, you know, the way that Facebook becomes their quest log. It's such an ingenious piece of world building. Um, it's so true to life. And the, you know, it's the fact that the game embraces all our RPG stereotypes by making it essentially the kids playing Lord of the Rings, and it's just, it's just brilliant. It's very brilliant. well crafted. Every, it's like, it's like a very well cut diamond. Like you can see why the, huh. we can, you can see why the the cutter, like cut it in that specific angle and way. Like you can Simon, understand the design decisions it makes. Simon's going far with the he analogies. He's got analogies today. in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's going through. No, I mean, am, am I wrong? Like Alex, am I wrong? Like. Like, Let me just make it fun. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 very it's, rarely in games, very rarely in games do you see the design intent in the games. You're just like, what the fuck, why? It doesn't make sense. Here, it's very transparent. Okay. Yeah, so I would we have, we have two people, you know, strongly, I mean, we're, we're kind of at the point where we know all these games are worthy to be in this conversation. We have two people really, 
you know, pushing on D- Divinity. I thought Darren people... said South Park was better than Divinity. Oh, did he? Well, well I'm kind of leaning on Divinity Camp. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> we have, like, we have, we have... Just, I think <laughs> Divinity lets you earn that satisfaction from every battle because it uses the turn-based ta- combat system that made XCOM so great, for example, uh, Evil uh, Enemy Within. So it's like every single battle, you like there's this huge amount of tension that you feel because you don't know whether that next turn everything's going to just go completely wrong or completely I right. I think part of the problem so is... just waiting for that to happen the games are so is different. so... Yeah, they're so... It is It is a real hardcore apples and oranges situation, but that's that's what these awards ultimately always boil down to. Um, Aaron, I think the design decisions uh, made uh, in, in South Park are impeccable. Like, it's good. It's excellent. I mean, it, uh, but because what we're talking like about here, and this is what I want to... That its design yeah. is to be, like, the best PC RPG, and it takes all the qualities and all the freedom of past games and polishes that. And so that stuff that Zach was talking about for, like, attacking an enemy while you're talking to him is not is is a part... Of, it's a strategy. It's a different gameplay style that really makes it stand out. And I think, I think yeah, it it, takes, that's why yeah. it's such a special game, is that it takes all these old ideas but like polishes them with the type of polish that we expect from a triple a game that is why it's such a surprise and why it's such a great game on the flip side it yeah, sounds it like takes the best from like Baldur's gate icewind dale all those forgotten realms games the, it takes the best features from those and modernizes it and it does i, I don't want to interrupt but has aaron played both of these games i uh i pretty much watched all of south park being played so uh, I haven't seen anything of Divinity though, so I can't really comment. What 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 would you comment at least about South Park then? I mean, having watched my fiance play through the whole thing, I mean it looked really fun. The story was interesting, and I wanted to watch it. So I mean, I would definitely say it's up there. Yeah, the, the problem is we have two people who have we basically have two strong supporters for each of these games. Right, right. Well, I guess my only issue with South Park, um, I guess, at least from watching it, um, some of the, I guess, tutorials seemed a little irritating. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 fart tutorial stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like you had pain. to do I it perfect, <laughs> or it wouldn't register. Yeah. And then you had to do it again and keep doing it again if you failed. And there were there are some mini games. That kind of have that too in there, and if you didn't get it just right, you had to redo it. And I could see that being like a little bit of a downside to it. I, I think we're yeah. gonna just have to make someone the tiebreaker just out of the arguments we've laid down, like which has more faults and which has more pros. I guess I guess the, all the problem is that Adam hasn't made either of these games. But Adam, speaking of like hearing well, the arguments, I've though, watched. Um, I, I mean, I've watched... You pl- your brother plays pro- it, yeah. Your brother plays yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, he played a lot of Divinity and Dragon Age. Uh, actually, I've seen yeah. two of my brothers play Dragon Age, so I'm more you familiar with that. Oh, you got more than one. I didn't know that. I didn't know you had one more. I didn't know I you have, had another brother. I have three brothers. Yeah, was... uh, anyways. Wow. Just like me. Right. Cool. But, so, I, but I have not seen... I have actually haven't seen South Park or... Uh, Dark Souls. Oh, no, I, I do. Dark Souls. I do. I do Dark, have. Dark the only one I haven't seen. Can, can so, I throw something out here as a yeah. potential spanner in the works, just as a, and just see oh, what's great. said. Um, what about uh, Shadow of Mordor? That would be an, that would be an action be... adventure game than an RPG. It's, it's an, an RPG. RPG. No, 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 it's not. Though. Just because uh, RPG elements exist in the game, an RPG does not make. Just saying. That's, but it, it it does push it because I mean it, it does have every the elements you you this progression is RPG you level up you gain experience you earn your skills you can build stats you can uh, um, craft things you can there's a lot of RPG features I think it's 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 it does it more than what like some tangential one does and why did it's not like Zelda it's more why did why was talking about Zelda I think I just brought it up to check if anybody felt particularly strongly about it that's all. I, I, I love Shadow of Mordor, but I don't think it's better than Dragon Age Inquisition. It is better I, than... I, there there are some issues I have. I think Shadow of Mordor, especially towards the end of that game, oh my god, does it make you feel so damn powerful. Especially The, ne- the Nemesis system is bar none one of the best gameplay features 
uh, that this genre has had in a long time. Like, or video games has had in a long time. But, uh, yeah, I think what what's surrounds that, like the story and some of the characters, I, I didn't really get into as much. Um, but that and the music, I would say, are best features of Shadow Mordor. Is, no one's going to yield on both Divinity or Dragon Age. Like, I watch <laughs> I, I think we already decided. I think, I, okay. okay. I mean, sorry, so, Divinity, so, Divinity and South Park. Sorry, I don't know what okay. I'm talking about. I, I, I'm not yielding to. I, so I mean, it's really gonna come down to someone saying a tiebreaker, like what, based on what you well, heard. Okay, I don't I mean, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, because it, it, it's because we're yeah. now we're starting to get granular. It, and we get to bargaining, and the bargain oh, yeah. I would say is. Oh God damn it! Don't do this. Oh, I know what you're gonna do. Do it. I'm gonna look at the Google Doc and see what. <laughs> no, I'm if, kidding. If, Nothing's if, gonna if happen. If Divinity wins this, and then if Divinity wins this, it's gonna be it's it's basically I think it sounds like it's gonna be game this, of the year, best big screen, best indie. Yeah, I was well, let's say this: South Park won best right. writing. No, wait, wait, Does wait, the writing in South Park no, compel it above? No, because ignore. Does this the, is the, this this is the reason we broke it into these groups is is because the writing is is does it propel it above Divinity in being uh, the best game on this particular? Well, how format? how is the writing is it, in Divinity? Is, the writing's so good. It's great. It's great. So, the, I heard the story the way is not that so you good. Take I heard the writing like line by line, the dialogue is not good, but like the actual uh, story. No, but, uh, hold up, hold up. Okay, look, what if Divinity wins this, and then the top three is um, South Park, Divinity, Bravely Default. You mean Bravely the... Default to win? Wait, Overall. Bravely Default win what? What if what if Divinity year? wins this, and then the final? I think Bravely Default is better than Divinity. I, I don't know. I mean, then again, I haven't. I haven't played Divinity. I haven't played. I haven't played Bravely Default oh yet. Oh my so god! I've, really I've played both, and I'd argue Divinity is better than Bravely Default. Bravely Default, I mean, again, I, that's really one of the only ones I can comment on because I played it. I think it's a good game. It has some really great things, but that just a couple, that one rep- rep- uh, repetition issue is a pretty big flaw, and pretty I haven't glad. heard, I haven't heard any significant flaws with you know Divinity. Anything there sounds more of a nitpick, where the Bravely Defaults. You know, design decision there is definitely not. Well, just I mean, we haven't asked about flaws about Divinity at all, though. Are there flaws within Divinity at all? I mean, there. I guess there are like a couple things you could point out. I mean, like some of the some battles could take the, the writing. I guess you like could a, one say like, a, like yeah. one of the like nitpicks. I guess would be like some battles can take a while, but that's kind of within the genre. So it's not really it's... yeah, and there are conversations that don't really matter, like in the grand scheme. It's some of it can be like it, there's not like going to be a big change in direction. The the more important thing is like the writing doesn't do it, but your actions can change the story. Because as I said, you could kill an entire town if you want. And people to. will hold it against so you. <laughs> the people will hold it against you. You'll be anytime you get anywhere near that place, they're gonna be like. Oh, it's you. <laughs> and so people, you know, come for your head. People will chase you out and into the wilderness and and come after you if you did that. Okay, um, uh, I don't so, I don't want to come yeah. back to this, but if Divinity wins, do are we really picking drag are we really picking Dark Souls over Dragon Age? I am. I'm gonna say, I don't want to bargain. Why are we bargaining? Uh, what it's I'm going to say from what I've heard, yeah, it's cool. um Dark Souls this should not beat Dragon Age. It sounds like both Alex and Simon, they, I, I agree with, I not agree, but they made their arguments convincing that the issues with Dark Souls are more significant than the issues with Dragon Age. I mean, but again, I haven't... Uh, I think I'm, it's I'm just, kinda... the, I, think, I think it's less about issues and more that just, I think, for all its flaws, and because I think it would be easy for Zach or, or, or to be able to say, well, Dragon Age doesn't do this great, doesn't do this great, for all its flaws and problems... Dragon Age is an extremely exciting and, and very fresh feeling game. See, 
that's the thing is that I would I would I was halfway expecting Darren to be like praising Skyhold because that's basically Suikoden in <laughs> the way it's the the way that thing's built up of you upgrading that place. I thought you would be talking about that, but I get to hear. Well, that's what I mean. It's things about. like that. It's this natural. It feels like this great natural evolution of the of the Bioware formula, um, and 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 things like Skyhold. The way Skyhold is introduced and uh, and because to be honest, I thought that. Because I was obviously playing it pre-launch with no spoilers or anything like that, no internet discussion because nobody else had it, and you know, I, the, I, I was convinced that um, the uh, Haven, the first place you're in, w was it. I, I thought that was just it, and yeah. Skyhold was like a revelation then when it's being upgraded and stuff like that. Like, it, but my 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 bargaining chip across the table here would be Dragon Age, South Park, Divinity wins that's an I, I would I go with that because I think presentation wise Dragon Age probably does, does it better than Dark Souls even if I think Dark Souls gameplay wise is better because the other thing is I feel like a game is going to come out in two months time that is the actual or is it where, where the fuck is it going to now <laughs> that is going to be like Bloodborne. oh so this is where the actual sequel this is what the actual because Miyazaki's yeah. on it, yeah. And well, that, there's also—I mean, there's well, also going to be that Dark Souls re-release that apparently has better lighting. It's got the, it's DLC, got the DLC, it. and apparently it's got like the DirectX visual upgrades. I mean, the the, the base. But are we going to bring that up <laughs> with next year's Game of well, the Year awards? Though, is that going to be? I, I mean, I mean, I don't—I don't, I don't think it has much, yeah. you know, to do with this conversation. But it was, you know, at least yeah. worth mentioning that it, it does exist. That there's going to be a re-release. And obviously, you know, all the games on this list are fucking excellent. Right. You know? <laughs> We're yeah, good. that's the oh, important thing to remember. But I, I just think, I, like I just think game. Dragon Age, South Park, and then Divinity to win. Yeah, and I would put Divinity to win games. Well, I mean, if Divinity <laughs> wins here, it's basically going to be the Divinity versus uh, Bravely, Default, and Bravely Default. Default I think has a lot going for it, but I think some big issues that are very obvious and apparent. It can't beat Divinity, even though. I heard, I heard, like with Bravely Second anyway, because the demos Wait, out in Japan, I, I, they made. Do you think the flaw is really that overlapping? Wait, what are we talking about? About Bravely Default. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that the fact that half the game you're basically just redoing dungeons. Uh, I, uh, I mean, it, in honesty, like it takes a few hours to get through that part. Um, but I do think it's a really, I mean, really. I mean, I haven't heard student. like there. Every game has design flaws. I haven't heard a, a, a single design flaw from Divinity at all. I agree. Like I don't. I I don't know. That's the thing. Like that's like that's why it. I'm skeptical of giving Divinity the the game of the year. Well, I mean, just because it doesn't have any glitch. No, no, no. Flaws, I'm saying every I mean, game has a yeah. design flaw. Sure. I have heard none for Divinity. I guess that's a. Like, that's not a bad. Thing. I'm being serious. Like I, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm yelling, but I'm being serious completely. Well, I can uh, mm. The only people that can talk to it are Zach and Darren. <laughs> so the only. I think the only way someone would say it's flawed is is, is it that you don't like that style of computer RPG. That's not and a design it, flaw. I that's know, but like that's flaw. But that's. Well, it's there's nothing glaringly wrong with it. It's incredibly, impeccably well designed. Which there's a reason why especially that it all works in co-op is even mind blowing. Is it just that you know it is a Kickstarter game and maybe you can sometimes see the the cracks in the in the in the in the it, wall? It does. It has rough edges. I'll say that much. Like you can you can see it here and there. Uh, to be fair. There's a few things about that though. Is that for one thing, that game probably cost about say four or five million to make because one million for the Kickstarter, whatever Larian decided to invest it. However, what it makes up for it is that even if there might be some flaws, you take it back to the fact that this game includes a full editor, like Neverwinter Night style. You could create your own map. Anyone, any time someone sees a flaw with that game, user can come in. All right, guys, check out Steam Workshop. I put a new patch in, it's going to fix all these problems, you're going to have a whole new game, a new character, a hundred hour new store, whatever you want to make. It's a great way for people who are interested in making games can use it. It's all these things. These guys pretty much took the flaws that are 
you know, inherently there just because of, as you said, it's a Kickstarter game. There's bound to be some problems with the their ambition not fully, you know, coming out because they've got to deal with this budget. Um, they've got this this community that's growing rapidly to help them, whatever it helps happens on the way. And it just came out, so there's you know bound to be some exciting things on the horizon for that. But if we're going to talk about the media game itself, worth without considering uh, anyone else, con you know, contributing to that, um, there there are some issues. But it's it's more along the lines like if you're into, as Darren said, if you're into that style of game, that's where really where it, it kind of comes right, down so, to. All right, so Alex, did you play? Wait, no, Alex, did you play Divinity? I've played a tiny bit, but not very much. Not enough to really speak with much authority, but I can certainly say it, it, it feels like a great... It feels like a great game, which is why I've been a bit changeable on it, because I know, um... You know, I, I also know Zach's taste, and I know if it was this was starring, like, scantily clad anime ladies, I would be more, um... I mean, I, I, no, no, I would I've be more skeptical. Of it. I, I'm just very... Oh... We haven't. Nah. From what it sounds like, it sounds like Divinity. It's very hard for Zach and Darren to, you know, bring up issues with it. I mean, other than kind of ambiguous things about like its polish, I guess. Whereas even Alex uh, has brought up issues with D Dragon Age, but I guess South Park. I like I like South, South Park, Park, and I've spoken. I, I've every single game I've liked, I've spoken to the flaws of the game though. Right. Because there are there there are not maybe not fundamental, but there are design choices that a game a game developer makes in every game that is stupid. It's dumb. I don't know why they do it because we're all human, but it happens. And I have. Uh, from what I see, we have more people talking positively about South Park. It's just that the people who have also played Divinity speak are, are speaking more positively of that, even though it's a lesser I mean, number. I, I mean, I, I love South Park. I, when I, I played it, I sat through... I mean, I, I really took a break between playing it and beating it. It's, it's just that with Divinity, it feels like it kind of opens things up to what could potentially happen. I mean, South Park, like, it's kind of hard to say because, you know, South Park... Who knows if they'll ever make another one of those? Well, I mean, but, but if Darren was saying awesome. earlier, That's... what Darren was Sorry, saying I... earlier is that uh, Divinity is like almost, I don't want to say perfectly, but a, a nearly perfectly crafted old school, you know, reminiscent PC RPG. Whereas, you know, it seems like people who played South Park are calling that almost the perfect game representation of what South Park could possibly be as an RPG. So we have the. Well, I mean, not even that, it's just a good RPG, period. But I guess what I'm getting at is that both these games, like, are there much that can be done to make these games better, or are, as they are, are they just really, really fucking solid? <laughs> so there is, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, I mean, for, with at least with Divinity's side, um, it's that whatever shortcomings there are, at least there's a modding community that can help help it grow. I don't think that's um, fair, though. But <laughs> that's. Well, it's it's there. I mean, it's a it's yeah, a yeah, yeah. But it was the same thing. Also, not available. South Park. So that's I don't think. What, what yeah, no, no. Of course, that's why I, I that's why I mentioned before that I don't want to talk right. too much okay. about okay. that. Would South Park because... be better if it could be modded and, you know? I would say uh, yes, but oh, that's just because yeah. of how oh, yeah. crazy things can get. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how crazy it is if you could what? mod it? Okay. Oh, what, right. what, so, oh my god, that would be stupid. We can't, if we, talk... we can't dilly dally on what if scenarios. I think we've yeah, been talking about yeah. this for like 50 minutes. Hold I up, think hold something up, that we're up. all kind of okay. expecting, though, is that Divinity is fully cooperative and it functions perfectly like it. And it's om I'd almost argue it's better to be enjoyed in co op like that. Yes. Okay. Definitely. So if we if we do say, you know, my suggestion oh. is, is to put forward Dragon Age. South Park, Divinity, with Divinity to win. At that point, it's obviously Divinity versus Bravely Default, and then also the question on if anything in the runners-up um, from either of those comes above. Like, my... The only other thing I could think of is we had da Danganronpa as Tangento. That's possibly no, better. Fuck but... that game. Okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> There's going to be no runner-ups hey. that beat Bravely Default and... Oh, because he's trying to put his foot forward on this but, one. So. But what I would say, but what I would say <laughs> is, I would do that, but I would put South Park ahead of Bravely. 
Oh, right. I forgot that for Game of the Year we're doing placements, and I would agree with... I would say, yeah, I would say Divinity, South Park, Bravely, and Divinity win. I mean, South Park, it sounds like the writing, which we're kind of incorporating, you know, the whole feel of the game, it's already won that yeah. award, which is its strong suit, so it's not... And, and you know, getting runner up to Game of the Year is not... And there wasn't much debate about that award either. It walked right, that, it, well, right. There was no question. So I think, I think that's fair. If we have South Park, you know, it's it wins the award for its obvious strength. You know, Bradley Default, you know, wins the award in its category. And then Divinity sounds like it's an excellent indie game worthy of being Game of the Year. So, Yeah. Not, not to be reductive, like South Park, it's the look and it's the writing. That propels it high. And then with Bradley Default, as you said, it, it promotes in that category. With Divinity, I think it's that it's got a great soundtrack, a great gameplay feature with the co-op, the combat. And and the player choice, and so I yeah I think if we're tra if we're gonna segment if we're gonna compartmentalize it a little bit based on what each certain feature of a game would have, I would say yeah pound for pound you know that's that's just coming from me I, like I don't want to yeah, want harp on I it too add much but one more it, let's say a decade passes from now, are we going to remember? Uh, which of the three, South Park, Bradley Default, and Divinity, which under the which of which of these are we going to remember the most? Bravely Second's going to well, come out. I'm not talking. About I'm saying, default. let's say Bravely Second it never happened. Let's say none of these games got a sequel. Oh, not, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, because kind of I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, if, if we're giving something game yeah, of the year, there has to, there's a awkward. legacy behind why we're giving it. Well, like, if you're going to say like, if we're going to remember it, it, that's the thing is that you got to. I, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to imagine it when you say ignore barely second. But um, personally, because people are obviously hungry for more classical RPGs, and that's been kind of the thing this past year with like Wasteland and uh, Shadowrun and there's Torment and Divinity. Ooh. Yeah, uh, Torment. Well, that's next what I mean. Year. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a round. Year. <laughs> it's next year. It's 2015. I'm already screwed up. Uh, I I think. As 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 Aaron mentioned and other people mentioned, it's that people talk a lot of praise about Divinity, and from what me and Darren have talked about, I think it's that you know for people who are fans of this genre, and it's it's the game's accessible for people who are not that deep into that marshland that is uh, the deep mechanics that a Baldur's Gate style. It's got a lot of that. So I, I personally, I would say Divinity. The the, the problem why the I, Divinity I have from what I've seen is that it plays it very safe because it has its roots and it stays true to its roots, and I respect that, and that 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 makes it a good game because you you can fix problems based on its predecessors and whatnot. Bravely Default no, and South true. Park, they both are not landmark accomplishments, but they put a dent because they're both one innovative, uh, but while staying to it, it to its really old roots, uh, both in its uh, own respective ways with Bravely Default being more so Final Fantasy like Final Fantasy V and South Park being yeah. more yeah. license-based. But you're not going to see a game like it. It, it. it makes more mistakes because well, it tries to be innovative. I, I, I disagree that Bravely Default's issues are stemmed from its innovations. I mean, it's not that has nothing to do with its you know repetitiveness in the second half, um, which... I mean, I, I don't think that's an argument. That's an issue with the game. It's brought up everywhere, but I, what, how big of an issue, I don't know, but I don't think that has anything to do with how innovative it is. Okay, fair See, enough. I, I'm just saying, I the more even... innovation you do, the more mistakes you're going to be making. That's what I'm saying. But See, I, I haven't even played... The whole... You want to go ahead? <laughs> I, I, I was just going to say, I haven't even played that much of Divinity, but having completed Bravely Default and, and just hearing the passion with which Divinity is spoken about... I don't think Bravely Default wins. Right. To be honest. I, I, I well, personally... I, all What I can say with certainty is I wouldn't put Bravely Default above South Park. So if I wouldn't right. put it above South Park, it probably no. doesn't belong... Well, no, I haven't played Bravely Default, it probably so doesn't, It probably doesn't that, belong like... over a Divinity either. I, 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 I just think... don't think Divinity is... Well, you haven't and played a, it. That's the problem. <laughs> and at, at a point, these lists become about what you can live with, and that I can live with. Because <laughs> it is a group thing. I just right. don't think Divinity is better than South Park. But you haven't played it. Play Divinity with co-op. Mm -hmm. It'll change your... I will say I'm not very six. interested in playing it. I mean, heck, I have access to it, so... Darren, we gotta play co-op. Oh my god, we do. <laughs> start a new game. <laughs> yeah, we gotta start a whole new game. I agree. 
So I think I think it's it. fair if we're talking about our our RPG site awards and our write up that we can get, we can shower a ton of praise on the South Park in its writing category because that's its strength. And we yeah. can shower a ton of praise for Divinity and a ton of praise for Bravely. They all get their, you know, spot in the sun. And then Divinity sounds like, as an overall package, it sounds like being Game of the Year is, you know, a choice that is sensible. <laughs> so I think that order, and the order as well, of Divinity, then South Park, then Bravely, it's from what, we, from what I've heard and everything that's been said, it sounds like... It's the best order we can come up with. I'm gonna play this game, Zach. I'm gonna find design flaws in this game. Just saying. <laughs> right, I will. I will. If, if this, if there, if there are glaring design flaws and you did not point them out, either one, I'm gonna call you a terrible. I mean, critic. to be very fair, I'm not good at spotting that stuff. I mean, I, 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 I tell you look what. at the games I reviewed, okay? Like Mugen Souls and Atelier and like all these games and Neptunia. Like you come to me and ask me, I, I, hey, Zach. What are the problems with those? Like, but that's I don't know. Thing. I like the like, writing. Need, that's about like, all I know. That's the thing. Like, designs need design choices, and it, they need to be critiqued because this is a procedural thing. Like, games are a procedural yeah. thing. However, however, where like we're, said, where it's, it's we're the, at it's now, the it's the problem with the where, where we're yeah. at now. I feel like we're. I could live with what's being said, Aaron. Thoughts. <laughs> well, uh, I agree for the most part. I mean. I don't have any objections. I mean, Bravely Default, while good, does have a lot of issues that keep it from being super amazing. So, And then the other ones, I feel, have earned their spot based on what you guys have said. So. I feel like, because I, cause I, cause I, cause I feel like, you know, we could probably dance around the, the, the South Park versus Divinity question, but ultimately... Um, I think I think the thing that that, t that tips me over the edge, as well as me just having played, a, a, you know, a little bit of it, and knowing that it is a good game that I'm keen to go back to, and experience more of, it's also the factor of of uh, of Divinity being this old school um, RPG, and and South Park, yes, being a little bit simplistic, which is a positive, but also can be yeah. viewed in a slightly less kind manner. It's got some amazing moments in that game. <laughs> it's a raucously funny game, but it has one best writing as well. That makes me feel a lot better. Um, beat this is never the outcome I ever game. expected. I expected Dragon Age to walk it. I'm very surprised. Like last year, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem walked. Okay, that's not forward. fair, though, because the competition it was going against was pretty shitty. Outside of SMT4. Next year? Oh, Nino Kuni was pretty good. Nino Kuni okay. has problems. But before we go off Just on saying. another, ta before we go off on another tangent on this massively long <laughs> thing, so can we can we agree as a group? We want to hear from everybody that um, for big screen our list is, um, and obviously there is no order to this list. Um, Dragon Age, South Park, and Divinity. Divinity to win. Divinity to win. And then, so is everybody? Is everybody? Is everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. I'm not happy with, but I'll go with it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll, I'm not happy with. It, <laughs> I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. and then, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not surprised that. you're cool with it, Zach. <laughs> well, I need to get to Skyhold and Dragon Age. Probably my my mind and enough more. And then, that. for overall, if we go one Divinity, two. South Park, free bravely, and thank fuck we're not doing more than a top three. Jesus, yeah, definitely not bravely. Yeah, so bravely bottom of the top three. If, you're, last. Last. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. This is true. This is there true. you go. He said it. Exactly. <laughs> we said about Jack, Dragon Age. I will play this Come game. Back like, I like. I love critiquing games. I'm just saying. I will play this game. If you're under Baldur's Gate, man, Baldur's Gate 2. If you, if you play this game and you're dissatisfied with the result of this, That's then I want you to write it up. Oh, I will. And pull it, you fuck go. you, Zach, or something. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> That'll be the, the SEO on that one. It would be great. Okay. <laughs> I want to be looking so it up. If everybody's happy with that, allow me to run down everything. Yep. Go ahead. So, um, I want to watch 
reward for next year. Um, Bloodborne, Final Fantasy XV, runners up with The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt as the winner. Um, best We're tangent. Not necessarily saying Final Fantasy XV will come out in 2015. No, it's just one to watch based exactly. on what we've seen from that game this year. Yes. Um, best tangential RPG, um, Destiny, uh, the absolutely brilliant This War of Mine, and the winner, uh, Dangan Romper 2. Dang, dang, having oh, awful oh. flashbacks to the debate about which of the two fucking games. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, best soundtrack <laughs> and score. Um, we have Arno Surge. That's another. That's another Zach filibuster. There. That's uh, um, Destiny. Uh, uh, sorry, Divinity. Sh- my, I, I might have should have put that in there, but Arno Surge. I'll, I'll put up there. Uh, Transistor and Bravely Default as the winner. Biggest surprise. Um, uh, Tetsuya Nomura being uh, leaving Final Fantasy XV under whatever circumstances he left uh, Valkyria Chronicles surprising coming to PC uh, and the winner Terror Battle actually not being terrible still um, traitors all of you Terror Battle Terror Battle those who betrayed Galia Hag. <laughs> uh, and best writing uh, uh, we have Danganronpa 2 again Dragon Age Inquisition wait we have Danganronpa 2 beat South Park for best writing? No, 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 no. And then, no, the, and then the winner. Are you looking at the And then the winner is South Park. Okay. And then today's, <laughs> uh, today's picks uh, indie RPG. We have Grimrock, Legend of Grimrock 2, rather, to be specific. Um, we have uh, Divinity, Original Sin, and Transistor with Divinity winning. For best small screen RPG, we have Terra Battle. Uh, Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth was it Shadows something something yeah Shadow of the Labyrinth, Labyrinth. Yeah. Uh, and Bravely Default as the winner and then a big screen RPG Dragon Age Inquisition South Park and Divinity Original Sin as the winner and then overall third place Bravely Default second place South Park and first place Divinity three timer and Dragon Age is not there <laughs> nope I can live with that, though. I can live with that. I just need to play more Dragon Age. Wait. I think I'm I'm very okay. We had Dark Souls above Dragon Age? No, we didn't. We took it out because we haggled. No, we had had Dragon... We decided to put Dragon Age in the runners-up for big screen, and Dark Souls is not there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Dragon Age is on that list. So Dragon Age is on I was talking about the game of the year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And it turns out Dark Souls 2 did not turn up anywhere. That's fine. I can live with that. Yeah. Let that we piece of shit game rot in hell. <laughs> I think that's a You gave it an much. eight. What's with all this hatred? <laughs> I know I know games aren't like a math equation, but like you didn't you should express this. <laughs> Let more. that piece of shit game rot in hell. Lots of applause, Jeez. lots of series. So lots angry. of it's not it, Enjoy God. your MMO. You no, need to play I the DLC for that it. game. At one point, I really was Ooh. going to write an article Deep about like, why Dark Souls 2 is so fundamentally flawed, but then I realized it would have been a hatred spew shit, so I'm like... Alright, let's move on. <laughs> We've already decided. I, 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 so... won't, I won't rise to the offline MMO. <laughs> so how comments. long is this podcast? Both parts? <laughs> Very long. It's, it's a it's long like... one. Six or seven hours. You might want to go on a big five, road trip it's... while listening to this. <laughs> There you go. I'll cover an entire work Those day. Are you Advise them right at the end. <laughs> uh, these are the parts you want to skip between this and this and this and this because it's just a bunch of haggling back Warning, and forth. Warning, expletives. That's how we get to it. Many expletives. Expletives. It comes down to like half an hour or something. It's, it's okay. Ah. Well, there we We're go. Done. All right. So, as we said, that we have that in the bag. And so, Divinity, the big winner today. <laughs> but... Uh, God, you are rubbing God. salt in my fucking wounds. I hate you. God, God tears are delicious. <laughs> I'm pretty proud oh, about that. Shit. So, uh, everyone, I once again want to thank everyone for joining me. I want to very much thank um, Alex, of course, for joining us on this podcast, right. the first one since E3. Always a pleasure when the so time zones you. can be uh, forced to line up, or in this case, not line up, he says, as it's 5 a.m. Right. in the morning. Um, Adam Vitelli, thank you. Okay. And thank you, Simon Chan. Join us and making it a making it an experience. Uh, thank you, Aaron Van Dyne, of course, for joining us. No problem. All right, and then uh, last, and of course, Darren McPhail. Thank you very much. You've come to us this this past year, and we really do appreciate the help you brought with our with the site. So I want to yes. very much extend a, a thank you to you. 
Thank thanks you very for much. having me, Peace and out. I'm happy to continue doing it, and I enjoy doing it. And thanks and for thank having you, me up on this giant thank podcast. You, thank you also to the um, to the various people, um, to obviously uh, David and Liz who couldn't make it to this, and also to the people who helped us out picking out the lists that we debated down from. So, um, um, uh, God, you know who, you who, are. who is on that list? Uh, Kyle and Andrea and uh, CD and Johnny and people like that who, who helped to contribute to it. Oh, this. Johnny contributed. I, I think he did, yeah. Um, Good. So thank you to all those people and to everybody for listening as well. Um, and yeah, that is our list. Thank God for that. And now we have to turn it into articles for the weekend. <laughs> well, well, the articles are going to yes. be the easy part. Are you kidding me? No, that's quite we're easy. Gonna, we're going to... Well, you guys will see that up on the site soon, and then, of course, you can check us out. Now, we're now on iTunes, if you're not d listening to it through there. So, you know, subscribe to us, check us out, uh, and, you know, look forward to the articles on the yep. site. By the time this is up, you should be Wait, able to read this those. This is going to go up with articles. And yes, it will go with the articles. And that when it happens. Tetragast on iTunes, at RPG site on Twitter, RPG site net on Facebook, We've also got the Steam Curation Group, which has a lot of recommendations for games. Um, got it. Uh, got it. Uh, Divinity. And, and if you hate <laughs> yeah, our choices, you probably should. Those I think we did our forums. Already. Yeah, Magna as well is is there for for debate and discussion and Magna hating central. each other. But anyway, oh I gosh. should probably go to bed. What, what time <laughs> is it over there, Alex? I think we... It's four fifty eight in the a.m. It's late. It's like everywhere. I think, unless except for Darren, maybe that's, <laughs> that's about it. And I think he's still still kind of early. So, once again, thanks everyone for joining us. Catch you next time. See you next time. Thank you.